well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come to God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. There shall be no end. So when we say, Lord, forever you reign, we're not just trying to recite a song. Forever and ever and ever and ever you reign. Forever. Shamalana na mayana na makariana na 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 na. Ibala ma pani gela mania na moso na na mayana na na. You reign. Yes, you are the Lord. Worship Him. Of Lord. Yes, you are the King. Yes, you are. Of kings. You are the Lord. In a world where many doubt is Lordship. Oh, 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 oh,
thank you Holy Spirit for your awesome presence in this place we can do nothing without your presence you are the only one who releases miracles you're the only one who transforms lives Come on, sing it to him. You're the God. You're the God of the heavens and the earth. Can you worship him? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. For you are bigger than what we say. Say, you are bigger than what we say. Come on, just watch it. This is part of the meeting. You are bigger. You are bigger than what we say. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for your presence in this place. We have come unto the only wise God, the one who is able to bless, to transform. And Father, as a family of faith, we have come inside and outside, heralding Jesus, opening up our spirits for more more intimacy more power more grace more revelation greater light to rule in the day and to rule in the night hallelujah hallelujah never forget hallelujah that every time we come into god's presence you must come with an expectation hallelujah the Bible says that he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. In other words, he exists. And then that he is the rewarder, not of everybody, but of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Many of us have left far and near, coming to learn of him, to worship him, to enjoy his presence, to receive his word. For every time his word comes, the spirit of that word comes into you. And he sets you, he says in Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, he said, the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. The spirit entered me. You're not just hearing words. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power, that your faith might not be upon the wisdom of man, but the power of God. What you are receiving in this place is spirit and life. For John 6, 63 says that the flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickened it. Say the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, life, capable of making you become the, what the word of God is saying. And he made two great lights. One to rule the day 
and another to rule the night. I've said it here and I will keep saying it. You will only arise and shine to the degree to which your light comes. It says arise, shine. Not because you want to arise, but your light has come. The Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light. Hallelujah. And the Lord is teaching us his ways. The Bible says ask for the ancient parts and walk in it. The ancient, our fathers, the fathers of faith. There were things that they knew. They understood certain patterns of the spirit. That gave them mastery and accuracy. The Bible says that if a man desires mastery. Yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully. It takes a level of diligence and tenacity. Understanding the principles and the ways of the spirit then when we understand his ways we will come into alignment with his spirit so that it will be in the earth as it is in the heavens and then the world will know that we are not just noise makers the world will know that we are not just tongue talkers they will see that there is something that is the bible says there is this treasure and is resident in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of god and not of us great men doing the works of God it says we have been created in Christ Jesus we have been called created preordained predestined that we should show forth revealing his majesty and his glory and God brought every one of you to learn of the ways of the spirit hallelujah the ways of the spirit brings to end confusion because it takes education and orientation by default as a result of the fallen nature many people began to come up with their concepts and ideologies of how to live and reign in god's kingdom if you want to function and be effective in god's kingdom then you must understand his ways his patterns the bible says the nation of israel saw his acts the manifestations of power but moses knew his ways and tonight we have a prayer god teach us your way we don't just want to see the power show us from the archives of the spirit how did the fathers tread this path how did they come into alignment with the kingdom that elijah will say that i that stands in the presence of god how did the psalmist understand the pattern of entering worship and coming into the presence of god he said in psalm 100 he said enter into his gate with thanksgiving how did he know that the throne room had gates and courts open our eyes so god that we may see we are tired of religion we know that there is more save us from the arrogance that lack of light brings to the body bring us to a point that our eyes will see and let me tell you something the proof is that we will be carriers of light not under any situation and circumstances the bible says he that cometh from above is above all he that cometh from above is above cosmos the system babylon the system that aims to subject people and bring them under the bondage of satan the bible makes us to understand in romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says for i reckon that the sufferings the constraints that our rehearsal and dealing and pressing i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation they are not waiting for everybody they are waiting for the manifestation of those the bible calls the sons let me tell you something hold on there are many words that are used as sons but there are two important ones one is called technon the other one is called weos technons mean it means a child one who is void of knowledge Weos means one who by reason of understanding has attained the same status with his father. So when Jesus called himself the son of God, they said he was God because he used the word weos. He said by reason of understanding, I have been elevated to a position where I can function in the God class. Grant us light, oh God. Grant us light. We are tired of darkness. We are tired of the world asking where is our God. Grant us light. For the entrance of your word brings light. And Lord, cause our hearts to be simple. Give us understanding. The Bible says in all thy getting, get understanding. 
exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring an ornament of glory upon thy head when thou dost embrace her he said does not wisdom cry crying in the streets searching for as many who can be interested we live in a day and age where all we want is hype so that we just jump and rejoice let me tell you that's not the way of the spirit everyone who has attained mastery knows that there is no glory without a story there is no there is no increase and lifting without a constraint and a building if you came here just to jump up and get excited you can pack your bible and go back this is a school of the spirit where the word of god will radically put a paradigm and shift you until you come into alignment with the kingdom then at that point you will legislate that the king that you are has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with titles has nothing to do with prophet or apostle has everything to do with the revelation of your position and your degree of alignment in the spirit you are lord you are lord you are risen from the dead you are lord the light is shining tonight causing the veil the bible says until today as they read Moses, the veil is still covered in their eyes. Can we, so, can we sing that song just one more time? You are Lord. 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 The light is shining. It's shining upon you for the sake of your family. For the sake of your generation, Obadiah 21 says, Saviors shall come out of Zion. Light is shining. That's what God is bringing in your direction. In the darkness. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We apologize for being late. We're just coming from a journey. Hallelujah. I bless God because He's causing our eyes to see. Let me see how many of you have been blessed and transformed in this place sincerely from your heart. Hallelujah. We have a goal, we have a target. Not that which was set by man, but that which was given by God. To equip. The Bible says, He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors. He said for the edification, the building up of the saints. That they will be equipped to do the work of the ministry. To the end that all of us will come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ to the end that we are matured not tossed through and fro by every wind of doctrine hallelujah and by the grace of God is always our desire to make your two or three hours that is spent every Friday worthwhile hallelujah we are committed under heaven to ensure that there is no week you come and go back the same hallelujah that you equip something not just say okay i was blessed no that you can see that you are coming into greater alignment hallelujah and so i welcome everyone inside and outside i'll be doing a brief teaching and then we'll pray <clears throat> hallelujah now there's a series that we have um but then by the leading of the spirit i'll just touch on one area of it hallelujah i'm going to be talking on kingdom economics kingdom economics that's the whole series hallelujah kingdom economics kingdom economics is the whole series but tonight i'll briefly be talking on financial freedom we've not 
done any teaching that has to do with finances and so it's very important hallelujah it's our desire in this place to see people who are not just spiritually fit listen it's our desire to not just see people who can pray in tongues and heal the sick and command miracles hallelujah it's our desire to see people who are economically empowered hallelujah so that they can become a blessing to their people how many of you will agree with me that most of the quarrels and the fight in our homes and our societies are directly or indirectly related to money many of you your parents begin to frown the moment you talk about money when you talk about god and his kingdom and rapture they are happy hallelujah it reminds them that this world is a temporary place the moment you talk about school fees or anything they get very sad hallelujah i'll not go into detail because of our time i want us to really take out time and pray so i'll just be sharing these principles very important hallelujah one of the most tragic things that has happened to the youth in this country nigeria is that the fathers or the educators those who claim to be the models for us to follow especially in the social and educational system have not been able to understand by the spirit the ways of god and the patterns that lead to true success i follow me now and so from the universities the polytechnics the institutions they teach and train people according to curriculums that if we are not careful may not be relevant in our generation hallelujah and so many people are raised and trained and unfortunately the family that is supposed to be the unit of education hallelujah many people say charity begins at home not just charity every true thing should start at home are you listening to me and many of us did not get the right training and the right building from our homes many of us had to learn everything most things that we know today from the media or our peers and, and some of these things have been devastating. They have put a mindset in us that will lead us to failure if not aligned by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Especially for the concept of wealth, increase, prosperity, finances, there has been a, a misconception. It grieves my heart every time I have the opportunity to talk with people, especially tongue-talking Christians concerning the subject of finances it's amazing how we keep blaming the church over misuse of funds and other things and the leaders the five-fold ministers do not realize that it's a responsibility to teach can i tell you something do not accuse any man of anything you have not taught him are you listening to me if i've not taught you how to be polite i have no right to accuse you of being impolite is that correct that's why the Bible says the days of our ignorance God overlooks. And so it takes knowledge and understanding. The average youth in this country has this as his financial paradigm. I write jam, go to the university, try to do well and get good grades. Pray in tongues as much as I can. Call forth as much as I can. Then when i'm in final year i begin to be nice to different uncles and relatives and we aspire and look forward to nmpc and shell and chevron and everywhere only to graduate and face an endless cycle of heartbreaks and disappointment there's such lamentation you read it in the papers you read it everywhere many churches are full of tongue-talking believers who are poor cannot help themselves cannot help the government cannot help the society and then the interesting thing is many people have tried using their own principles to achieve god's result and the frustration has led to all kinds of demonic and satanic messages about wealth and prosperity the most common being that wealth and prosperity is demonic is satanic is bad and it leads people to hell hallelujah and the man of god who is preaching that message has his jeep waiting for him outside 
the man of God who is preaching that message has many prophetic offerings to be given to him after service. The man who is preaching that message and misleading people has his children in the best of schools. Are you following me? The man who is preaching that demonic message has millions stacked in his account. The man who is preaching that demonic message has a sumptuous meal, baked chicken, kebab, all kinds of things in his house. And then we begin to teach and cripple the body. Another erroneous mindset is the concept that wealth and prosperity is carnality. Materialism. And so many believers have said, take the world, give me Jesus. And then the Bible says, for God so loved that world. Hallelujah. And and so we are, we are giving ourselves an alignment. How many of you have been taught comprehensively in your university or polytechnic or school anything about financial education? Nobody. Over 95% of us, if at all, um, if not more than that, did not learn things like tithing and giving from our families. Is that correct? that's terrible and so we have a responsibility not just to teach us to pray in tongues and to release the kingdom and the power and the glory of god but to become economically empowered and let me tell you something you will never never attain mastery in any area until you understand the laws that govern that area are you following me now many of our parents are languishing people are crying recession recession People are packing up, yet in the midst of it, like Goshen and the land of Egypt, where there is darkness and people are dying, there is light in another place. And can I tell you something? We will be wicked people if we do not teach you on economic empowerment. Because you know what? I've seen more believers backslide because of money than as a result of sickness, occultism and other things. I've seen more ladies give themselves because of money. Am I, am I ministering to someone tonight? We trivialize it as if it's not a spiritual issue. I've shared it here. I'll never forget some years ago when a lady shared with me how her mother was forced to sleep with the manager of her company because they were stranded and it happened with the permission of the father. Now, please keep quiet. Be, don't be saying, hey, God forbid. Before you roll your hand over your head, sit down quietly, get your notebook, otherwise you'll be liable of doing the same thing. I need you to know that the parents of this dear lady were not stupid people. There is a way you... How many of you have seen your parents do things that you know this is not them? The constraint that the present recession, a true apostolic ministry, must learn to address the societal issues at the moment. Any true apostolic ministry cannot shy away from the realities that are on ground. How many of you do not know that the world is in a recession? Let me see your hands. Hallelujah. Banks have been matched. How many of you know? Banks, are, I mean, banks that used to be the confidence of everyone. Ha! Ah. And we must be taught the ways of God otherwise we will sustain casualties in our lives but when we know of the way of god when men say there is a casting down we will say there is a lifting up there are many of us who have been praying in tongues praying in tongues and our families hate us all that you do when they're having a family meeting is for you to start the prayer and close it every discussion in that family doesn't concern you you are trying to legislate the counsel of god and they look at you and say what have you done in this family the church is where we are today not necessarily because we are not praying in tongues we have not been able to come up with a level of empowerment that will affect society are you listening to me we still have the church running up and down at government houses begging for loans begging for schemes begging for all kinds of things the church has turned to be beggars begging everybody for everything hallelujah as a result of not understanding the laws that god has put many men of god have become slaves to the wealthy people in their ministries the people have become the holy spirit 
hallelujah and tonight very briefly i want to share on a few principles hear me brothers and sisters i say it with all humility these are not things we read from books these are principles that we are living by and as many of you who can humble yourself to say you know let me tell you something like a great man of god bishop Oedipo, will say only fools doubt proof are you listening to me archbishop benson idahosa said you have no right to criticize a man of a thing until you have done twice what that man has done isn't it amazing how many people have written books about finances they have they have lined tapes about finances and there is nothing in their life that shows that they know what they are doing let me tell you something if you truly know what you are doing with time some results you show is that correct if you are living in holiness with time the results you show if you are working in god's principles the end of faith is a manifestation that must appear unto all hallelujah and so this is a workshop really we'll do it very fast and then we'll pray i'm talking on financial freedom the series is kingdom economics i'll just touch on one of the subtopics and then we pray help us lord in the name of jesus you don't break listen to me look up look up look up you don't break free from poverty by coming to kneel down and say man of god pray for me let me tell you something it's not going to bring sustainable deliverance are you listening to me there are many of our families that have finished all their money because they are trying to tap into everything the greatest way to tap into the abundance of god is first to know his ways hallelujah many believers have become so lazy that we believe that our seeds can do everything for us thank you jesus so what is financial freedom please write please write i beg you write something write something write something i remember a man of god pastor chris was sharing something and he said that a a very successful businessman was speaking in a seminar just training students hallelujah and then he was speaking on certain ways to be financially free and when he began to speak the students were objecting and he noticed there was a student who was always saying excuse sir this is not what our lecturer taught us and then at a point the man got agitated and he said young man stand up he said is your lecturer a millionaire he said no he said are you a millionaire he said no he said sit down i am a millionaire i'm telling you what the market is doing keep your theory and keep all your old junk and listen to me sounds like many believers to me the moment they begin to talk open to deuteronomy they say ah power to get how has it changed your life it, there's nothing that irritates me as an arrogant person who has no result hallelujah and we have lots of them in the body we claim we know one thing i have learned is that when i see someone that has something and has seen a dimension that i've not seen i humble myself and press into it hallelujah many people make noise about finances say all kinds of things yet it's telling on people we have more people telling lies doing all kinds of things in the body because of finances but the bible says i wish above all things that ye may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers don't let the devil deceive you and say your father is rich your mother is rich hallelujah thank you jesus what is financial freedom very quickly financial freedom now look up please can i have someone for illustration just anybody aaron i like using you god bless you now look at me the average believer in church please look up the average believer in church believes that he or she will be rich the moment you have a business idea plus capital to execute that idea how many of you have thought like that i'm telling you tonight is not true that's the first mindset you need to change many of us have been praying oh god fifty thousand, and my life will be changed you have watched too much advert 
in, the, in, in, in the media says 50,000 can change your life and who wants to be a millionaire and so on and so forth and many people pray and say God this idea if only you can give me 100,000 and every time you are praying God is leading you to the world and you are saying God you are a wicked person can I tell you the truth be honest those of you who got the money why are you still not rich because you said if I can just 20,000 to start that recharge card business give me 6 months God has given you 3 years nothing has changed terrible mindsets by people so you see people running to banks for loans many of our parents many ministries although they are tongue talking they are living in this kind of error because we believe that financial freedom is equal to a business structure plus capital many of you will thank god tonight for not bringing the money because you would have blown it wasted it and been angry with yourself hallelujah oh god hundred thousand for that restaurant and see what i'll do you really think so follow me tonight he said johnny at the end of it we will pray and ask god to help us hallelujah financial freedom listen to me financial freedom is financial abundance right having abundance plus the time the time to be blessed by that abundance plus the peace of mind to live with it that's financial freedom financial freedom is not financial abundance what many people have been pursuing is abundance that's not enough that's the kind of thing that leads people to hellfire financial freedom is not just abundance it's abundance plus time look up how many of you will agree with me that there are many rich people who are not financially free because they don't have time their children have become strangers in their homes many people's spiritual life has gone down the drain in the quest to look for money money has become the order of the day money 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 every time and after yelling and yelling about the money they will never get it so financial freedom is not just having abundance no financial freedom is abundance plus the time you are never financially free if you do not have time many nigerians are far from financial freedom because they lack time and then peace of mind the word of the lord declares that the blessing of the lord it make it rich and added no sorrow i've seen too many sorrowful people claiming to be laughing in their jeeps but their sorrow will kill them their degree their sorrow is directly proportional to the wealth they are having hallelujah a man who used to trust his wife now separates he puts a partition in the house because he became a millionaire and he says young woman no longer my wife this is your room from today henceforth and you go and make a bed with a wardrobe inside and all kinds of things sorrow that's what the bible calls there are many of our parents that till today they are still suspecting us you left home angry because you fought with them they are suspecting that you are the one that stole the money and you are not even aware what kind of life is that sorrow upon sorrow begin to suspect everybody including your children that's not financial freedom that's not the desire that's not if god wanted us to get blessed that way then we'll never be able to attain the things that he has called us unto another point i want you to write is that financial freedom was not designed to be a lifetime pursuit get this brothers and sisters hear me you are not supposed to spend your entire life trying to be blessed you will never be able to accomplish your assignment that way satan has distracted us with this ugly mindset that all about our life is looking for money it has become the determinant of our jobs it has become the determinant of our geographical locations it has become the determinant of several things a man at 70 is still begging to look for job not because he likes it he's still pursuing money no sir god did not design this system that way and can i tell you something about about wealth 
those who don't sit down to learn the principles will begin to envy and get angry at those who are paying the price to attain it and let me tell you if you don't sit down and take this serious tomorrow you'll be angry at your friends and your colleagues that's why god is bringing this our way are you guessing blessed tonight there are two important factors that must be at work in your life for you to attain financial freedom and that's where we are starting tonight i love doing this teaching timeless principles number one why are people poor why are many believers poor why won't god just open up the heavens and flood it with cash why are many tongue-talking believers why are some of us still struggling with our school fees our parents are still struggling they've been trying to build houses for donkey years it has led them into all kinds of things we have called all kinds of people to come to our house to collect the remaining money that is left all in the name of praying with with all kinds of candles and garbages in our house the bible says that they know not neither do they understand it said so the earth is out of course i'm trying to provoke someone tonight to the end that we will pray hallelujah number one you will never become financially free not according to the kingdom's way if you do not see the need that's the first point there are many believers who do not see the need there are many ministries who do not see the need every time they raise the subject of financial education you see this spiritual atmosphere that people put and feel no 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 don't we are pressing into god there are new dimensions and let me tell you something there's an error i've seen in the body many believers just believe that you just keep praying in tongues and you are praying and then one day the heavens will be open over you let's finish up this this story and you find out that many people are going to be disappointed after 10 years of serving god diligently question the bible says jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever is that correct look up how many of us can bear me witness that there are many of our parents who are campus fellowship presidents some of them are pastors they've been praying in tongues for years and they are still poor can anybody agree with me on that why is that so there are even many of our families that have not missed out on tithing and giving for once but they are still poor how many of you have been tithing 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 it's just that you don't want to say it but it has been paining you because it looks like something is wrong somewhere and can i tell you something the error is not from god it's certainly not from god open our eyes tonight lord you must see the need so many believers do not see the need every time you are talking they have this air of ah i'm a lady i'm going to get married to a rich man i've, I've made up my mind let any poor man carry his, his his promises and come close to me and see what i'll do with him there's no manifestation pack your load and go wrong mindset got it from culture got it from films got it from all kinds of things you must see the need what does a need do to you number one a need creates dissatisfaction the bible says woe to them who are at ease in zion you can never break through a process until you get dissatisfied hallelujah you must get dissatisfied you must get dissatisfied get dissatisfied with the fight and the quarrel that happens between your father and your mother at all times get dissatisfied the bible says through desire proverbs 18 verse 1 a man having separated himself he intermeddled with all wisdom there must be a desire When you see the need it creates a sense of responsibility so many people are blaming the government we blame our parents we blame the government ah they are chopping our money they stop giving us scholarship if that they were giving my mind would have changed all oh, my my lifestyle and all of that i would not have been sleeping around calm down you truly begin to break through in any area when you stop blaming people and accept responsibility say after me inside and outside in the name of jesus please say it like you mean it in the name of jesus i stop blaming people i 
take responsibility over my financial destiny. One more time. Say, I take responsibility over my financial destiny. Yes. A need brings you to a point where you, you stand to take responsibility. Many of us are waiting for our parents to die. We are praying and anticipating. On their deathbed, we come to visit them, but we can't wait for them to die because we are waiting for something they call inheritance. And before a man would die, the, the in-laws and the parents are already arguing about how to share things. Hmm. Number two, or still, still on that point of the need, a need breaks every limitation. The moment you see a need for something, limits will be broken in your life. Hallelujah. How many of you have gone for lectures in the rain? Let me see your hands. Ladies, how many of you have exposed your hair to the rain, but you still didn't stop? You just ran for lectures. Why? When you see a need, you will not see limitations again. So many people see limitations. And the reason is because they have not seen a need. We are waiting for the day we inherit wealth from our parents. My father told me, as soon as I'm graduating, a Lexus will be waiting for me and one two-bedroom I've been eyeing. And your whole life is built on that mirage. The word of God declares, hear me, woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man. That man can be anybody. Your father, your mother. You know that song? Um, your father may let you down. It's not because he's a wicked man. Your mother may let you down. Even you yourself, you will let yourself down. The best and the greatest of any man is still a man. I told myself, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence I, I, I gladly retired from putting my strength hallelujah hallelujah so the first the first factor is what you must see the need say after me i see a need to be financially free number two when you have seen the need the second point is you will go for knowledge the second point is to go for knowledge you will never become financially free just by guessing and stumbling your way into it a great man said something. He said, if you wake up and find yourself rich, be sure you were not sleeping. Hallelujah. Many of us have this mindset that, oh God, one day, one day, we have been receiving things that are hanging in the realm of the spirit for donkey years. But the Bible says, let it be done in the earth as it is in the heaven. That means it is possible that although a thing is in the heavens, but it cannot be done in the earth. hallelujah go for knowledge and the first phase of going for knowledge are you getting my points the first phase under going for knowledge is to change your mindset change your mindset we'll talk on that right now when you have seen the need and come to a point where you say look nobody in my lineage and my family has been able to bless anybody all i inherited was what people call generational curses that's what many of us came to know you just knew that nothing has been working in your life. Now God has done everything by the revelation of his word. And by the reality of your position in Christ. He has brought you to a position where you realize that all of these ordinances have been nailed. What are you going to leave for your own children? Hallelujah. I am convinced that my entire generation is blessed because of me. Bible says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Change your mindset. Change your mindset. Change your mindset. The difference between, let me show you something. Proverbs 22, verse 2, I believe. Proverbs 22. Can someone read? Please someone read very quickly. Then let me have two people. I need someone who looks like a rich man. Come on, help me. I mean, someone to start... <laughs> All right, stand here. Hallelujah. Aaron, you can stand here. 
listen listen to this very interesting scripture all of you look up go ahead the rich the rich and poor meet and together. the poor they meet together where in this big earth it says what the lord, the lord is, the is the maker of them or what kind of scripture is that he said the rich and the poor they all meet in the same place he said god is the maker of them all look up the bible never said god is the maker of them so god didn't make them so he made them they made they separated themselves look up there is a difference between the rich and the poor and the difference is not money write it burn it into your head i'm shouting so that it will enter your spirit the difference between the rich and the poor is not naira and kobo believe me change your mindset under knowledge hallelujah okay so watch this call this guy the rich god forbid this is just for hallelujah call this guy the poor are you listening to me look at this the basic difference between the rich and the poor is what their mindset say after me their mindset so the difference between where you are right now no matter how tongue talking you are and where god wants you to be financially is what repeat after me my mindset don't be ashamed of it this is a training ground say my mindset i don't care what excuse you have to give let me tell you there is no situation you are in right now that someone has not gotten to a worse situation and conquered it whether it's that your parents are late whether it's that you were born your the, the map of your village is not in nigeria that's irrelevant are you listening to me so we are going to examine the mindsets please get this there is something the rich do that make them rich there is something the poor do that keeps them poor are you getting blessed tonight number one the rich accept responsibility while the poor do not accept responsibility look at our society and see why people are poor all we are saying give us now and people lead themselves with placards how much to two thousand and they stand from morning till night go to offices of influential people and see a row of people waiting to seek for favor from morning till night say oh god well done no i've been trying to i was wondering if it was possible to see and the man said mm -mm, i'm busy the poor the rich hates the poor and they say leave me i say oh god well done no. and you see the guy running and his and his children now, how many of you have seen your parents do that kind of thing i'll never forget when we used to rear goats we never ate one never suffered for it did everything and and where were the goats going government workers as i was carrying the last sets of goats it will I, it pain me because the bible says a, 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 a worker is worthy of his wages <laughs> you work so hard only to make the rich richer isn't that amazing the poor work from morning till night while they are working the rich are playing them like a chess what you people call your job is someone's company and the person is crossing his leg and playing the economy of nations like a chess and the poor are running you work so hard as soon as you make your money you take it to the market and you come back poor again only to wait for another month when will it end The poor work so hard so hard and take the money to the rich so what's their difference number one this guy accepts that i'm responsible for my finances yes my parents didn't try yes the government didn't try but i take responsibility these guys accusing these people and saying hadibi is my uncle my uncle god that child abba i don't know work here you think so And we are praying my father's brother sister's cousin is the commissioner and that guy never calls god punish him with this hallelujah number two 
this is one of the biggest points between the rich and the poor as you write it underline it the rich have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification paying the price today to enjoy the blessings tomorrow the poor they don't like delaying instant gratification sharp sharp now let's drop today and die tomorrow that's the mindset of many nigerians that's why we like all kinds of things get rich quick this and that there's one way bring one thousand go under the bridge in the evening and come i'll give you this we like things that don't have processes hallelujah but the bible says seed time harvest hallelujah so the rich know how to delay instant gratification i've said it everywhere that's why i love Igbo people oh no no come on don't think what you think i'm thinking i said this during kingdom world summit come on i was innocent <laughs> hallelujah amen because they have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification you see a young man they just give him scholarship fifty thousand, and then he carries the bb thing blackberry forty thousand out of fifty thousand what you have home and abroad give me your ping number your ping ping that is driving people crazy especially ladies all around give me this it looks like that's a happening thing give me blackberry and you squeeze life out of your parents you must give me that forty thousand. they say we are traveling to to cameroon you have not gone for how many years you have been gathering cameroon money <laughs> then you finally buy the blackberry and then you don't have the amount to be recharging this every month say sorry what's wrong say, eh, this phone you know all these kind of things i hope to change one soon there are so many people who have put themselves under stress because our concept of finances is that get spend just get and spend and we guys know how to do that hey guys i don't hammer oh yeah and all the psycho fans who are out to finish your money will follow you then you go to peter's say oh yeah help yourself jerry can i tell you something no matter how much tongues you pray god will never empower you beyond your level of managing his resources never god will never empower you beyond the level to which you can manage his resources because the earth is the lord's it doesn't belong to you are you getting blessed instant gratification how many of us have been feasting on the seeds that god has given us can i tell you something this is god's principle god will tell you selena run down there and you will meet a great harvest when you run to that farm you will see a bag of seeds with wisdom to turn that seed into a harvest he said lord where is the harvest god said right there that is it many people do not understand god's system and that's why we get disappointed help us lord number three the poor spend and spend while the rich save and invest i cannot tell you how i feel sad over many church people we know how to shout and call forth wealth and that's important if you have not been calling forth money brothers and sisters believe me get set you are violating a serious kingdom law and you are going to remain poor Say, ah, when my uncle has told me in the come okay oh. we have warned ourselves in this place to stop depending on men doesn't mean that god will not use men to bless you hallelujah the poor spend and spend isn't it amazing that those who are the richest in this environment are the ones who are modest and visionary those who are the ones loud and doing all of these things they really don't have much the pressure of trying to prove a point i said it during kingdom wealth summit i was i was taking an extra of these many ladies you are changing your weave on every week 
giving an impression like you're a multi-millionaire and you know you are not let me tell you something about pretending a status you have not yet attained the day your money finishes you'll be forced to still maintain that status although you don't have the means you have sworn hellfire for anybody that eats in zinc house now your fortune has gone your father has told you because you are stubborn you will not give you money again you are hungry you are dying the holy spirit is advising your guy to enter this zinc house <laughs> and you have given yourself a mindset how can i at my level not so look up let me say this are you getting blessed tonight look up please let me correct something money can come through favor in fact according to god's economic system all right there are many ways that money comes remember 2009 10 10 kingdom wealth summit money cometh hallelujah money can come through favor let me give you an instance god can tell me say josh so 10,000 naira to Reuben's life. That's favor, right? Strangers can come and feed your flock. That's favor. Listen to me. What we do not understand is that money does not grow by favor. Money can come by favor. Money cannot grow by favor. There is only one biblical way of increase and multiplication. Say after me, investment. Say it. There is only one biblical way of multiplication. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. I'll try to really, really be fast. Quickly, let's turn there. Matthew 25. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many of us are seeing some light over our finances right now? Thank you, Lord. Matthew 25. If you are there, say amen okay verse 14 matthew 25 14 inside and outside make sure god has your attention tonight this is very important for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his servants and delivered unto them his good unto one he gave what five talents talent means money many people say it's gift no it's not gift it's money exactly that to another he gave what to another he gave what he says according to his ability and straightway he took his journey hallelujah read verse 16 everybody one to read hold on he went and invested the word traded there is he did business are you following me who gave them the talent what did the master expect them to do with it multiply it correct and the bible didn't say they hold they held their hands together say, are you ready oh yeah fire and then they started bible says they went and did business are you listening to me help us oh lord okay verse 19 after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them 20. and so he that received five talents came and brought what how did he multiply it did you see that he multiplied it again are, are you are you following me the word of god teaches us the principles i hope you know he said the kingdom of god is likened unto this it's giving us the economic principle of the kingdom it says lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold i have gained does that look like an investment language i have gained doesn't look to me like a prayer language beside them five talents more verse 21 his lord said unto him what so what does god tell those who multiply his resources okay well, let's see how good you have been reading your bibles thou has been what so he calls it faithfulness over a few things I will make you ruler over what are you seeing how to increase in the kingdom i will make you ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the lord 22. he also that had received two talents came and then 23 let's read on 
and then he said that he also gained you know and um verse 24 looks like many of us are you ready now read then he which had received the one talent came and said lord i knew that thou art a hard man stop are you seeing the mindset of the poor they always give excuses always give excuses said lord i knew that thou was a hard man doing what reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw 25 and i was afraid fear and went and hid my talent in the earth hold on isn't it amazing that he put the talent in the earth and it didn't grow i thought you put seeds in the earth and they grow but this guy did something to his talent and although it was under the earth it didn't grow lo there thou hast that is thine 26 listen to what god is telling many tongue-talking believers and this is why we remain where we are in spite of the great future hallelujah god is saying that's beautiful but one thing thou lackest thou wicked ah look at the kinds of words the only other place this language was used was those who healed in his name and did all of this he says wicked and what slothful new testament language english students lazy lazy what although you can be a servant you can be a lazy one thou knewest that where i sowed not and gather where i have not sown verse 27 thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming i would have received mine with usury in other words according to god's system the worst form of investment is putting your money in the bank interesting he said you would have at least done that one hallelujah he said what take therefore this is a fearful scripture are you seeing why the wealth of many of our parents have disappeared although they are christians take therefore the talent from him and give it to who this wealth conversion that many people are saying is leaving the unbelievers some believers will be shocked that it will also disappear from their own hands it's in the bible all three were called servants yet it was collected from one and added unto another hallelujah praise god let's hurry up the poor go for results they like results they don't want to know the process give me fish don't teach me how to fish there are so many of us that have been blessed by wealthy parents never for once have we asked and said daddy mommy i'm of age now can you begin to teach me can you show me you have been very successful in your finances i've never cried for school fees i've never begged can you teach me what did you know that brought you this game many of us are always happy we have been privileged to be with people that can bless us we have never taken out time hallelujah the poor always like results that's why many people in the village are always fighting those in the city they are always waiting for those in the city to come and then they dance around your car expecting what give them something then you give them one thousand and they finish it or some of our relatives that are causing trouble in our homes you give them 10,000 today, they call you after two weeks. They say, oh, guy, it has finished. Of course. Say, send another one. Then when you don't send, they say, this wicked guy. She means your wife that has carried you away. She's a witch. Where will we end all this nonsense? Amazing that it happens in the church too. Hallelujah. The rich keep learning. A rich man is not interested in results all of this flamboyancy that people do you see someone with a jeep and you're like hey, hey i want that jeep anyhow anyhow no there are too many people that are after results the results are inevitable when you know the principles hallelujah hallelujah the poor depend on luck have you ever had people say that thing? How? Nigerians are lucky. Oh, it's my luck. Oh. Say MTN just came to build a mast on this person's land. 
he just bought one plot of land mtn came to beg him and they are giving him three hundred thousand naira every month for using his plot of land when the holy spirit was telling two of you go and buy that land or go and do this the other person will say abba i will buy i will buy car you bought your golf as you were going out somebody jammed it it's still parked there sorry if i offend you tonight it's important it's necessary for us to enter hallelujah so are you getting the mindset now will you agree with me right now that financial freedom is not just having abundance i mean not just having a business structure and money to do it do you agree with me there are many people you open your shop and eat everything in your shop by yourself i see people do that just to and just carry something and, and then you are balancing the account and you go and meet as a prophet demons they are, my things are just disappearing you have poultry pieces ah carry 10 chickens give them now you, you forget that those things are reducing the point you come and call your wife madam come what is happening in this poultry then you see your son simply because he has not been smiling you say come here you have said joining bad friends have you go and bring your manager and your son say, what is there before he talks you are giving me look this is this is you are laughing but this is the story of some of us here but god wants us to change so let's hurry up change your mindset after changing your mindset realize that god's economic system works on principles oh help us holy spirit that we get this it's not guesswork it works on definite principles hallelujah i'm going to talk about just three laws very quickly three laws number one the law of value right the law of value the law of value take it seriously the law of value look up please look up please i want everybody to look up this guy sells recharge card for instance is that correct um let's say this guy sells electronics look up because i do not produce what they sell if i want to get it from them how do i get it i exchange it so who will be getting the money those who have the products is that correct the law of value you must add value to yourself and you must have something to offer otherwise you will remain poor wealth is for those who have something to offer what do you have to offer that was a question the prophet asked the woman in second kings chapter 4 he said what do you have in your house the law of value look up please I see so many believers who pray that's wonderful confess God's word that's wonderful but I do not see us investing in knowledge to know the principles I want to provoke all of us now inside and outside how many of you this year have bought books on finances by kingdom people books on finances let me see your hands don't feel bad you will not go to hell so do you see that it's not God's fault that we are where we are Come on, no, nobody is condemning you tonight. We are in a school. Is that okay? We are provoking ourselves. Hallelujah. The law of value. Let me say something. I respect, although I am sorry because their wealth is soon going to leave them. All of the people who are not wealthy by kingdom principles. But these people sit day and night. This is what the rich do. The rich always get knowledge. And the poor are just searching for anything they can search where to patch and manage they were managing here and then the rich have the knowledge of the system many of us do not refine ourselves look up the bible makes us to understand in esther chapter 2 that although esther was already a beautiful lady are you listening to me was she qualified to stand before the king although she was beautiful but she needed to do what develop herself there are many of you that have been given potentials 
and talents by God. Every meeting you go, you still see them shouting this issue of your talent and your potential and the giftings of God in your life. And many of us have not taken it seriously. Hallelujah. The Bible says the gift of a man makes room. Have you read that in your Bible? The gift of a man makes room for him. Steve, please come. Hallelujah. What's his name? Who called him strings? His father, competence, gave him that name. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? I knew when we were roommates with Steve and would come and Steve would be rehearsing on this guitar. He had tapes of many people who had gone ahead of him. Are you following me now? And he would rehearse and build himself. That time nobody knew him as it were, but he was building. How many of you remember David? David had potentials, but he remained in the wilderness. What was he doing in the wilderness? He was building. Many of us get up with our own refined talents and we are angry why the world is not rushing towards us. You come to stand to present a special number. And what the keyboardist is playing and what you are singing is different. The keyboardist is playing and then you just raise your song and you are not even aware that you have made a mistake. You are not even aware that you have missed the key. Then you say, I'm producing a debut album. How in the world will I buy your album? Am I provoking you? It's only in the church that we find people who are not competent and think praying in tongues will cover for incompetence. Go for competence. That's what the law of value says. Train yourself. Equip yourself. By the grace of God with all humility. One of the reasons why we are enjoying good sound and all of this thing is because the people in the department are training and building themselves consistently. How many of you have been blessed by the worship team? How many of you have been blessed by the media people? Dio, please stand up. Dio just came back. Hallelujah. He had been on training with um, Frontline Media Academy, hosting some of the best media people around the nation for two weeks. After that, he went to Lagos to have another training. Does he pray in tongues? Answer me. Has he been attending miracle service? Why did he go for training? His article was recently, um, I think so, he was telling me one of his articles. I hope you know last year he got the best student journalist in Nigeria. Why in the world would he not get it? The best student journalist. Hallelujah. I needed to know that beyond tongues with all humility, to God be the glory. But one of the reasons why things are working for us is we have paid the price to delay instant gratification and build. Are you listening to me? There are so many things. Many of you may not know. Let me give you an instance with one person. How many of you know that Ejimi is a chartered wealth manager? Don't you think we are just some bunch of visionless pastors who have struggled and tried. I pass here nowhere. I pass here nowhere. I just say, well, let's just quietly do ministry. Hallelujah. Go for knowledge. Provoke yourself. Stop looking for results right now. Go for knowledge. And the results will follow you. Stop looking for results and no, no, go for knowledge. Hallelujah. Day and night, when you come to our house, I say it with all humility. You can ask those who come around. Day and night, either we are studying, digging in the word, or we are online researching on things, or buying books, or God Jordan is here. Ask him, he's the one who supplies books for us. As soon as he comes back from Lagos, he's calling us. There is this book. There is that book. Go for knowledge. Those who are above are those who go for knowledge. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. Many of you have not prepared yourself. You will disappoint yourself in the days of opportunity. Esther prepared herself for one year. And when the opportunity came, she took advantage of it. Bishop T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Maximizing the Moment. 
we must learn how to maximize the moment hallelujah the law of value sit down build yourself god has told you you're going to have an event management and a catering a catering institute how many world top caterers do you know how many do you know in nigeria if you cannot list five proficient people in the field you believe god will bless you with i am convinced you are not serious hallelujah are you listening to me you want to do interior decor or you want to do fashion if you cannot list five proficient people who have made it in your field you are not serious at all hallelujah you want to sing you've written 36 songs and you want to break them into three and release all the albums who are the christian artists you know in the world you don't know what's the latest album by kotka you don't know i don't care all i know is that we have a church with large people there are plenty of people in koinonia if i release this album now Abba, it will sell hallelujah let me say something with all humility hope is here she bakes and she really aspires to bake very well i have watched her improve hallelujah i have watched her. i remember a time when she came and met me and we sat down and began to talk and to build ourselves how many of you are building yourselves i'm not supposed to be saying this but i'm just saying it to provoke you to challenge you hallelujah how many people are building themselves Mukhtar is here the chief usher he has been building himself he runs a laundry he runs a laundry as a student he's the one who launders our clothes Kenny runs a laundry building themselves and what many of us do is to sit down you are gisting from morning till night let me tell you something that kind of mindset is the mindset that has caused many people to be disappointed are you getting blessed tonight so sit down tell yourself sit down say it sit down say settle down and build yourself the law of value go for knowledge go for excellence be competent i made up my mind that there is no field god has asked me to rule and reign that i'll be ashamed bible says study to show yourself approved a workman we only use it for school and university what happens when you graduate study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number two the law of investments i've said it the only way money grows is by investment many of us have no knowledge of the financial vehicles that are available many of us do not know highest what many of us know about investment is that you can have a small shop open you have your gary indomie we've on put your little we've on and 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 add add shampoo and and then that's all I know it's unfortunate our educational system is not teaching us but how many of us have made it a point of duty to go out of the box and help yourself hallelujah are you getting blessed the only way money grows is when you invest can i tell you something many ministries are poor today not because they don't have partners they are always running on deficit you collect one million as your offering your budget is one million how in the world do you plan to be rich that's why we have people begging every day ministers begging come help me now are you could not see my life am i not begging <laughs> i'm sorry if i sound arrogant i'm touching a topic that i think is very important hallelujah very important the law of investment and so what's your assignment sit down this night and throughout this week begin to find out all the business vehicles that are available for you 
that you can start with your 1,000, 2,000. Tolu, please stand up. I remember, I'm saying it, uh, um, I remember when she used to meet me and talk and we used to talk about different business things. She was really tired and said she wanted God to help her. Today, how many of you know the recharge card, this thing, just in front of chapel? That's her own. It belongs to her. She's the owner today. Has he reduced your prayer points, sweetheart? No, no, no. I mean, has he reduced your prayer points on finances? Well, she, I'm not sure she understands what I'm saying. Hallelujah. How many of... Please sit down. God bless you. How many of us go to God and the time you are supposed to use and bless him? You plan to pray for six hours. Five hours is crying and begging. I say, do this thing for me now, God. You are able to... By the grace of God, one of the things that has accelerated our spiritual life is we have minimal time talking about money in the place of prayer. So I can go to the place of prayer and say, I hail you most high. You can't be worshipping God like that when there's fire burning under you. Hallelujah. Number three, the law of accumulation. I'll stop here. The law of accumulation. The law of accumulation. Simply put, big is small plus small plus small plus small plus small. I can I, I keep I keep laughing at people who are waiting and wishing you ask them. They bring their budget and all of this. Say how much? Say ten million naira. Say I have faith. Say fine. You have been chopping all the ten million in the little five five thousand and ten ten thousand. You have been blowing. You see, there's a 20,000. Oh, Jare, you will not do all of these things. And then you go and spend it on useless things. Do you not realize that 1 million naira is 1,000 naira in 1,000 places? Hello? Is that correct? Let me give you an assignment. Go to the bank and tell them to give you a total of all the money that's entered your account since you open it. You see how many estates you would have built by now. Where did the estates go to? Your trainers. Or your 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 t-shirt that you do as a me bend down boutique me new creation in christ man really what in the world is wrong with you to go and take that conserve it a day will come you can own a boutique stop trying to prove points those you are trying to prove a point to they are not even looking at you hallelujah once upon a time we ate in community market. We're happy about it today. And we're glad for the transition. Hallelujah. Learn to appreciate your transitions. Don't be ashamed of it. Someone comes and he sees you at that joint. That Daraka joint where they sell Akara and this is. Oh yeah, looking as if you don't. Don't you know it? You just sit there in the smoke. No problem. Say, Mama, 30 naira. Add 15 naira on. And you are praying, Lord, this is not my future. It's just a journey. Lord, this is not my future. Somebody says, ah, pastor. Yeah, no problem. At least I'm not defrauding anybody in church. There was a time we used to drink tea at this Meshai joint. You don't know. It doesn't look like it now. Oh, there was that glorious time. And Jimmy was at the forefront of it. An indomie, they'll tie it for you. They'll fry it. You will not even do well. They'll just turn it. I know it all. Don't be deceived by this suit. We have been there. So what is wrong if you are there now? Why are you embarrassed about it? You are spending two two thousand in Mr. Biggs every day. Where are you going with it? You are not producing anything. There's no inflow, but you are spending money. Doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. We don't eat if there's no fish in our food. Every day, 100, 100 naira is going on. 300 naira. You are eating in cafeteria purely. And you know that there's not much coming in. The law of accumulation says that you begin to save small by small. The journey of a thousand miles begins with what? Ah, Josh, it's only 10,000. They give me per month. 
find out the person who collects 2,000 per session who has been saving and has 20,000 now Warren Buffett one of the world's richest person hallelujah he was asked a simple question and he was said ah how are you so rich like this he said he had been investing and he had allowed his investments to grow for over 38 years and they said what is your worst mistake in life he started investing at age eight he said my worst investment is i started investing late how old are you happy birthday how old are you hallelujah is this a call for us tonight is this a call for us to sit up Many of us are on steady allowance. 100,000, 50,000 every week. Yet our lives have not changed. Why? Because we are wasting it day and night. And you are saying, God, more. God will never give you more until you prove you are faithful. Are you listening to me? Until you prove you are faithful. We'll have to stop here for now. I hope you were able to learn something. I look forward to a time when we'll, we'll take a week and we'll do a proper financial seminar hallelujah are you are you looking forward to that time because it's our desire that our life will change do you know that if your life changes you will give more many of you have a heart to give it's just that the means is not there how many of you feel very bad when there are projects and you truly cannot give you feel very bad the only way is not prayer and say lord those who don't have help them to give this is how god helps them to give light shines in the darkness rise up on your feet and let's pray God bless us. Kababa ko prende kabala da bosh. Go ahead and just pray in tongues for one minute. We're wrapping up tonight. Say, Lord, thank you for this knowledge. Grace to mix your word with faith. Maka parada ba sikataya. The season has come for me to change my life, change my finances. The kingdom will move forward when you're financially empowered. Your families will move forward. You will end pain and tears and tragedy in your family. The Bible says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. Before I round up, let me say this. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 gives us the foundation of a believer's prosperity hallelujah the foundation begins to talk about our tithe and our offerings there are so many people here who are not faithful in tithing you're not faithful in tithing you've been hearing about your tithe a ten percent and you are you are being you're being deceived the eyes this man of god the bible says ye are cursed verse 9 please verse 9 he says ye are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even let's start from verse 8 please let's run to it i know we're out of time verse 8 very quickly please will a man rob god he said yet ye have robbed me but he said wherein have we robbed thee he said what in tithe so if you don't tithe you're a thief you're a robber so says the word of god as a result verse 10 or verse 9 it says you are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even this whole nation verse 10 bring you what all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house he said prove me now here we say the lord if i will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be no room enough to receive it verse 11 it says and i will rebuke this is the spiritual agency behind the poverty of many families it's called the devourer i will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before her time in the field thus said the lord verse 12 the last verse and all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a dislike some land saith the lord of hosts there are several of us here we have been praying and fasting and we are not faithful in our tithe i like you to know that you are going to pray tonight and say lord i realize i've been unfaithful i receive grace tonight to be diligent in my tithing as you add all other laws diligent in your tithing
diligent in your giving many of us are stingy and greedy the bible says there is he that scattered and increased there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty go ahead and pray say lord greed and selfishness i command it out of my life i am a giver 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 hallelujah hallelujah i don't do this but let me provoke everyone please i like you to bring out a seed bring out a seed everybody please just just hold something in your hand hold hand this is for someone who, who can i need everybody to connect with something who doesn't have something to hold on to i'm serious who doesn't have come hallelujah hold on to something hallelujah please hold on to something who doesn't have let me just give one more person we are not trying to get your money brothers and sisters i'd like you to bring out a seed i want to pray for you don't you think i know that there are ministers who are out to cheat people and mislead people please ushers very quickly can we have you come up with all shooting baskets right in front do it quickly please we're out of time we have to do this hallelujah very very quickly please ushers run and come hallelujah i want to pray no just hold it stand at the rows and at the eye inside and outside we are going to do that quickly please if you don't have a seed in your hand hold the hands of someone who has just connect please don't be ashamed we are very serious hallelujah we are going to pray and say lord we make up our minds to be diligent in tithing diligent in giving and diligent in abiding by this principle lift up your voice and pray that's the prayer point grace in my tithe oh god grace come on pray in my tithe i receive grace to be a faithful tither i stop robbing god grace to be a tither grace to be a tither grace to be faithful god will not rob you grace to be a tither now pray and say lord grace to give i break the spirit of greed go ahead and pray many of you are greedy many of you are stingy that's why you will not move forward financially say lord i break that spirit of greed that spirit that will only withhold thinking god wants to cheat you i break that spirit of greed god is a good god he will not rob you hallelujah 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 now i'm going to pray for this seed very quickly as i pray for this seed i'll drop it as you drop your seed begin to pray all of these points the law of value and the rest say lord this week i sit down many of you god will give you ideas god will give you things don't so please take it seriously help let's help our families if they couldn't help us let's help them hallelujah father i pray lift up your seed father we are doing this according to the word of the lord i pray lord that there will be an avalanche of wealth riches and prosperity this is a prosperous ministry you have blessed us with it we have the power to prosper lord there are people trusting you for school fees there are families trusting you they are in debt they are in recessions they are trusting you many have lost in their businesses and investments many are trusting you to get by lord i pray that as this seed is casted prophetically let people begin to enter unusual realms of concepts insights ideas let fear die that fear that stops you from taking bold steps let it die god is with you god is with you you will not fail you will not fail hallelujah now go ahead and drop your seed and begin to pray in tongues drop your seed and in one minute begin to pray in tongues please let's hurry up we're out of time as you drop your seed pray in the spirit in the name of jesus 
and moving forward in the name of Jesus the grace of God is speaking for me in my finances in the name of Jesus in my finances in the name of Jesus on behalf of my family on behalf of my ministry on behalf of my business pray for your family pray for your ministry pray for your church pray for your business say Lord enough is enough enough is enough enough is enough let my life break forth inside and outside pray 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 when men say there is a casting down will say there is a lifting up there is a lifting up there is a lifting up come on pray pray in the spirit I know we're out of time but this is important for your destiny pray in the spirit let the least among us be as great as David let the least among us be as great as David let the least among us be as great as David Lord we believe your word you are not a man that you should lie you are not the son of man that you should repent your word is yea your word is amen hallelujah hallelujah very quickly three books to help you in your finances money will not make you rich money won't make you rich by Sunday Adelaja please buy it it's available at the Jordan bookstore buy the truth it's part of the law of value money won't make you rich Sunday Adelaja we recommend three of them unfair advantage Robert Kiyosaki unfair advantage Hallelujah. The covenant of wealth. Bishop David Oyedeko. Covenant of wealth. Bishop David Oyedeko. The law of prosperity. Kenneth Copeland. The law of prosperity. Kenneth Copeland. Please write it. I'll repeat it very quickly. Money won't make you rich. Sunday Adelaja. Unfair Advantage by Robert Kiyosaki. I don't like many of his books, but that one book is a very powerful one. Hallelujah. The Covenant of Wealth by Bishop David Oyedeko. Hallelujah. There are many unhealthy books you should not read. They come from Satan. One of it is called the 48 Laws of Power. Don't you ever find yourself reading those books. They look like they are financial books. They are, they are books orchestrated by demons. They will cause you not to fear the Lord and they will teach you how to manipulate people. By the grace of God, we carefully select books that we have read, that we understand that their principles are consistent with the Word of God hallelujah please read sit down this week get a new exercise book write my financial destiny you have one on your dreams and visions write one on your finances hallelujah because let me tell you something that sister you see sitting down she may have only one dress but there is something happening inside her the Bible says the vision in the end, it said, though it tarries, it will not speak at the beginning, but in the end it will speak. This is why we, I respect and I honor people so much, including these children. Some of you just look at them and nod. No. Value relationships. Value relationships. Many of our parents are crying for help today and there's nobody to help them because they neglected everybody. Some of them were the only ones to go to school and they turned and looked at the illiterates and said, you are not my class. And then the tables turned. This life. Everybody has his shell. The Bible says time and chance is a mystery that happens to all men. So whether you take advantage of your opportunity or not, 
God is just to turn the table. And one day it will get to somebody you've been laughing at. And maybe when you met the person, the person was a drunkard. But by the time the table would have reached, you would be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, with sufficient knowledge to take advantage of that opportunity. Value relationships. Some of you, you cannot keep friends for five, five days. You are fighting with everybody. You just believe everybody has a problem and you won't adjust. Hallelujah. There are many of us that will not forgive people that hurt us since they were in secondary school. You just turn and you saw the person sitting in Koinonia and say, God, what is this person doing here? Because when you rise, see, if you don't believe in people when they are nothing, when they rise, they will forget about you too. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Relationships. And they brought a crippled man who dashed monkey banana who would take that crippled man to the, to the palace. Relationships. Everybody say relationships. Relationships can give you what money may not give you. There are people on account of relationships they got jobs without interview. You've been seeing your roommate because they are humble. You don't know who their father is. You're just speaking against everybody and feeling your this and that. And one day you may go to their house and find somebody there that your own father has been trying to access his office. See, let me tell you, relationships are powerful. This is a very powerful message. I believe God just wants me to drop this right now. When I see old women and very old men the question I ask is, where are their children? Two, where are their friends? Because they had an opportunity to take advantage of their youthful life. Are you following me now? Many of them did not take advantage of it. And a man, a man at 75, coming to move around in a house and say he wants to be a gate man. I said it last week. For 75 years, where were we, his friends? No, it's, it, it's impossible that all his friends will be failures. You mean nobody could help him that he's coming now to be a gate man to take five or ten thousand? I'm not insulting the occupation. Are you getting my point? I'm saying that there, there is always opportunity. Many of us now are begging for things we would get for free because we neglected people years ago that are in position to bless us now. There are many of us, maybe if you would have seen me 15 years ago or so, some of you will look and say all kinds of things. No, value people now. Especially when they are hearing what you are hearing too. Look, let me tell you. The word can give you an inheritance. Never conclude on any man who is getting revelation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many wealthy people today. There are people in the presidency. There are multi Bill Gates had classmates, true or false. All of these wealthy people had classmates. Some of those classmates are still begging today. And Bill Gates makes overnight what some of them may never make in the lifetime. Is it that he's so greedy that he cannot bless them? They are giving millions to charity. Can they help their friends? Neglect. This is a message to someone this night. Today is Valentine's Day. Let me just press it in. Some of us have a habit of this disdain for people based on class or whatever parameters we have. Love people. When you see us say, turn around, hug one another and all of this, we are doing it for a reason. We are doing it for a reason. Everybody say opportunity. Remember my message on activating breakthroughs. The ministry of destiny help us cherish very valuable relationships i'm not saying just hop in and out of any sinner's life and say they said we should have relationship no the bible says have no business with the unfruitful works of darkness unfruitful that means it doesn't bear fruit there are some relationships that bear fruit hallelujah it doesn't mean the people have to be perfect i'm not talking of love relationship now i'm just talking of general relationship the people may have their differences just like you have your own too correct people are not working with us because we are perfect there are some of you who hate me it's just that you like what i represent to the body and you are receiving it in peace praise the lord value relationships write it write it so that 
even after 10 years, if you're looking at your notes, you will see it. Value relationships. When you see people, greet them. Greet them. Don't say I'm a pastor of social so, so ministry. So what? Huh? Greet people. You get up in the morning, you pass people, good morning. Huh? Don't look and say, you know, when I was in, in, in SS3, that's when you were writing common interest. So what? Let me tell you, if age used to give food, some of our parents will be resting by now. Relationships. Hallelujah. Right? Financial dominion. What is financial dominion? We defined it, but let me define it again. Shiva kata balada the ability to totally conquer lack to conquer poverty to conquer financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring is financial dominion financial dominion is the ability notice that word to totally when you understand that you find out that it's a journey for us the ability to totally conquer lack Poverty, financial hardship, alongside the effects that they bring. And let's see some of the effects that they bring. Fear. 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 Number two, insecurity. Many poor people are insecure. The Bible says money is a defense. It says a rich man's words are harsh. Because he believes he's defended. But a poor man uses entreaties. Always begging. A life of begging. Greed. Many people are greedy. Because they have not attained that state of financial dominion. Greed. What if I give? Where would the money come from again? So someone can be dying. And you can join people to say, Ah, you are dying. What happened? Whereas... You can rush the person to the hospital. But you are saying, me too, what I have is not much. Greed. Self-centeredness. Some of the effects that financial hardship brings. Self-centeredness. Many people are self-centered. And part of the reason, not all of the reason, but part of the reason is this life of insufficiency. Self-centered. They don't think about anybody just me, myself. What I have is not much. You know if it was much, we would have shared. But now that it's more, please don't disturb me. I can pray for you. Self-centeredness. Unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. Many people have gotten into sinful and shameful things because of money. They've entered wrong relationships, wrong marriages, they have compromised, given themselves freely and cheaply. They've been involved in diabolic things. All kinds of things because of poverty. When you pay a man and say, go and kill another person and I will give you 100,000 or 200,000. That's terrible. Unrighteousness. Say in the name of Jesus. I will attain financial dominion. And be free from all these things. Yeah. There are many people who live perpetually under fear. Will the landlord come and kick me out? And we live in a time when a landlord can escalate the price of his rent to twice or three in places like Abuja. And now a family is stranded and there's almost nothing they can do about it. Hallelujah. Tonight, we are going to be looking at the anatomy of God's economic system. Hmm. Grant us light, oh God. The anatomy of God's economic system. The internal workings. How does this thing work? Financial prosperity is not a mystery, it's not magic. There is a way this thing works. And tonight I pray that God will open our eyes to understand. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let me have two people. I like using people for example. My brother, ah, you sat in front. Sitting in front means you have volunteered one here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, every time we examine anything, any subject in the Christian faith, you must realize that oftentimes there are two dimensions. There are two perspectives. Are you listening to me now? There is the world's economic system. Everybody say the world's economic system. That means the way that people in the world run their economy. This world, this system, cosmos, it has its economic system. The way people get money, the way people multiply it, the way people become rich, they have their system. But the kingdom of God also has an economic system. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, then you should understand how the system of heaven works. The Bible gives us a picture of this. It said, lay, lay up for yourself treasures where? So he began to give us a picture that there is a heavenly system that interacts with the earth. That a man can be in the earth realm, but he can make heavenly deposits. Are you getting my point now? This is Jesus speaking. Lay for yourself treasures. And he tells us the limitations of this world system. He said thieves can come. All kinds of things can go wrong. But there is a system that has another mode of operation. And so tonight we want to examine this system. Everybody say heaven's economy. Say it again, heaven's economy. Many of you are shocked because we've not been taught in church. Either because we have been made to believe that when you teach people about prosperity, it is carnality. But by now I know that every one of us here hates poverty. Is that true? And we're not going to allow anybody just sit down and mislead us and make us believe that teaching about pr prosperity and the place of kingdom wealth is, is, is carnality. No, no, it's not at all. At all. There is a lot that the kingdom of God cannot, the, the advancement of the kingdom of God can be crippled when there is no finance. Hallelujah. So there are two economic systems. What's the first one? What's the first one? The world's economic system. And there is the second one. What is it? Hallelujah. Now, the fact that it is heaven's economy does not mean that it is not operational in this earth. Are you getting my point? Because this is where we are now. So we take the principles of the kingdom and we walk with it in this earth. And bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. The first thing I want us to examine is the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why does God bless? This is, this is one of the things you must understand when you are exploring the economy. Don't talk about money. Don't talk about business. Don't talk about all of these things. The first thing you need to know is why does God bless the believer? Why do we have to be blessed in the kingdom? What is the role of of wealth and prosperity as far as kingdom advancement is concerned why does god bless us when a herbalist when a man goes to meet a herbalist and he says baba i want charm say for what say i want to be rich the man gives him conditions is that true he said remember why we are blessing you and here are the conditions the day you compromise that money disappears agreed agreed and the man goes back and then things begin to work for him. There is a system. So why does God bless us? Because if you do not know why God prospers people, you will misuse prosperity when it comes. Are, are you seeing why lots of people misuse prosperity? They don't know the purpose of prosperity in the kingdom. So they get money and do lots of crazy things. You know, I... I, I told you, I think it was last week. I don't know if I said it here or maybe during the final year or workers retreat, any one of them. Hallelujah. I watched a documentary how that the son of the Sultan of Brunel or so, I think one of these very wealthy billionaires. Hallelujah. 
his child i think if i if i remember rightly about 22 years old when he was celebrating his 22 year old birthday the father gave him 250 million dollars as a birthday gift the wealthiest man of god in africa is worth about 190 million us dollars after years of operating this world but now one son who clocked 22 years listen to me i want to challenge you tonight the father just gave him money and the boy didn't know 22 years from a rich family will he buy food in a restaurant a man whose empire is built with gold and the boy didn't know what to do so he went to go and rent a yacht and he brought in half of hollywood stars half Praise the Lord. Half. Just to come and enjoy. Drink beer. Waste away. Become soul hunters. And he wanted to become friends with a popular. One of these secular musicians. And he knew that. Going to go and meet him the way a poor man. A poor man uses entreaties. And he knew that that way would not work. So they measured his size. And he made a shoe for the musician made of diamonds and presented it as an offer to become his friend do you think it will work at once at once it worked at once now listen that's a lot of money spent on vanity and the truth is compared to the about maybe 16 billion or thereabout that his father had that's a chicken change that's pocket money are you getting what i'm saying don't just start fantasizing because this is the world system there are, of course any man that does not give his life to christ no matter what you have in this world you are not advancing the cause of the kingdom you must be advancing another cause everybody's advancing something whether you know it or not are you getting my point so why does god bless us never forget this in your journey to financial freedom and financial dominion the day you forget it god is not entitled to bless you please follow me because the rules that govern kingdom wealth are very strict your violation of them will cost you so much number one the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom why god blesses us number one to live a comfortable life i shared this during the kingdom wealth summit in 2010 number one to live a comfortable life that's one of the reasons why god blesses us in the kingdom let me say it again god is not glorified in our poverty say it after me god is not glorified when i'm poor say one more time god is not glorified when i'm poor now say God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Say one more time. God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong that you own a house that has a worship room with sound system all around that is automated that wakes you up in worship and a door that recites a scripture before opening is not vanity don't just clap oh. many clapped many clapped like this this is not to make you fantasize what is wrong with just sitting down and having options and saying in the next two weeks I don't want to eat this food and not feel guilty and not feel bad hallelujah what is wrong with being able to live a comfortable life and send your children to good schools good schools with very good standard hallelujah there's nothing wrong living a very comfortable life you sleep in peace you wake up in peace God wants us to live a comfortable life. Now, many of us have not had the experience of that comfort. Maybe just a few of us. But I'm telling you, God wants you to be comfortable. Say, God wants me to be comfortable. 
I want you to believe it no matter how you have suffered. Say it. God wants me to be comfortable. You know, some of us have suffered so much as you are saying it, you are saying, ah, God, God wants you to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Because when you are comfortable, let me tell you one of the greatest benefits of prosperity. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to choose. Hallelujah. Poor people never have the opportunity to choose. Whatever comes, they go with it. Hallelujah. It gives you options. You can choose. And in that choosing, you will now choose according to the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So to live a comfortable life. Number two. This is very important. Why does God bless us in the kingdom? To finance the cause of Christ on the earth. To finance the cause of Christ. To advance the kingdom. Never forget this. This is one of the reasons why God. One of the major reasons as a matter of fact. Why God blesses men in the kingdom. The world may have their system of operation. But when you are a kingdom citizen. If you want to be open to the prosperity of God. And to command financial dominion. Then you must understand that one of the major reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom is to advance the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Soul winning. To build the house of God. To finance the kingdom. Finance soul winning. Bless the lives of of the vessels that he's using to increase and improve people to better the lives of people hallelujah very important now i wrote something here and i want you to write it it's god's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities i'll say it again it is god's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities this is so important i know that there are kingdom financiers those who are called and anointed into this apostolic ministry of providing major financial supplies for kingdom activities but can i tell you part of every believer's responsibility is to contribute financially among other reasons in the building of the kingdom say amen if you believe that so financial dominion is not a wish i told you it's a it's a principle it's a path it has a formula if you can work with it then god will honor you otherwise you are not entitled as simple as that you may not go to hell but you are certainly not going to be eligible it is god's plan for every believer is god's desire for everyone seated and hearing me and even for the online community is god's desire for everyone to be part of advancing the kingdom listen we are still going to discuss other sections but you must come to a point in your life where out of every resource god gives you there must be something in it that goes for the kingdom it's not just a special um a un, until you are prompted and all of that that it is part of your life that you're going to provide financial supplies for the kingdom it is very very important hallelujah that's the second reason the third reason why god blesses us in the kingdom is to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical way to reveal the love of God and God so loved the world that he that you must give your love expression in this dying world to reveal the love of God to a dying world in a very practical way to help the poor to help the hungry to be committed in charity to be committed in community projects and nation building all of these things are part of the reason why God blesses us in the kingdom. That means God's blessings 
is not just limited to the house of God. First the house of God, but also to give the world an opportunity to see that God is love. I wrote here acts of love and kindness that moves beyond religion, beyond culture, beyond gender, and beyond social status. When you come and build a school for a community, for instance, and you say everyone in this community will pay the teachers for 10 years, teach these children, whether you know them or not, that's revealing the love of God. When there are all kinds of charity activities and you bless people, you help the needy, you provide for the poor. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. How do you borrow a rich man money? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. How many of you have seen maybe one of your uncle that is very, very rich? And maybe at a point he needs 1,000 now. And he said, please give me 1,000. Will you give him? Very quick, step. who knows? Maybe as he's giving you back, he won't give you that same 1,000. So when a rich man says, please borrow me, very quickly, say, I, I have. He said, no, no, let me just say, mm, it's my own, I have. Because you know that when he's giving you back, he'll say, ah, you out of this abundance. So let's just take this one. And you just look and you see that it has multiplied ridiculously. So the Bible says when you give to the poor, it's the same thing as God saying, borrow me money. I will return it to you. Ah, I will do. Goodness. God, every rich man blesses according to his ability. That means he first looks at his ability. And from that revelation, he will bless you. So the Bible says, my God, this is Paul speaking, shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Praise the Lord. These are the three major reasons in the kingdom why God blesses us. Let's review it quickly. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Number two, to advance or to finance the cause of, the, of Christ on earth. Use the word advance, not finance. Advance, advance. The financing is to bring that advancement. I will build my church. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Praise the Lord. When it was time for him to build the temple, they called on people and from the abundance that they brought, the tabernacle was built. Do you know? Listen, let me prove this thing to you um, scripturally. The Bible says when Israel was about to leave Egypt, God made Egypt to give them money. That was the first wealth transfer we see in the Bible. Are you following me now? This, we are going to come to the issue of wealth transfer. So we see the first wealth transfer in scripture. That overnight, someone who had oppressed people for 430 years, he gave them money. But many of them did not know. He gave them sheep and oxen so that he can sponsor their journey. Are you following me? That journey is like the journey of the believer to the promised land now. So financial resources were given. But because they did not know why God blessed them, later on he would demand of them that they bring from that resource. Because they did not know, they used the money. To build an idol the gold and everything eventually they built an idol that's what a lot of people are doing every time you do not know why god blesses you will build an idol with it are you following me please this is a very important teaching i want you to pay rapt attention so god blesses you so that you can advance the course of the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Never forget this. Wealth in the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's not an accomplishment. You satisfy these rules and God trusts you with it. Please understand. That's why there is no boasting. Any rich man in the kingdom that brags unnecessarily does not understand the operation of the kingdom fully. Trust. And he gave unto one. Please come. Three of you. Look at me. The Bible says, he gave unto one what? Five talents. Did they beg him for it? 
he gave them he gave them he gave them according to their several abilities right after a while he came back and demanded accountability write this word down stewardship please sit down write this word down stewardship this is this is this is a word that you must never forget if you want to be blessed in the kingdom there are no owners of prosperity as it were financial prosperity no no there are stewards that god commits wealth to for their personal blessing and to be a blessing the day you stop being a steward you are not entitled to the wealth of the kingdom everybody say i am a steward what does it mean to be a steward a caretaker a caretaker that means your greatest pursuit in the kingdom is to become trustworthy worthy enough that god can recommend you and can trust you there are some people who will never be rich no matter how much they pray and fast even if they enter one gallon of anointing oil and come out you know why they are not trustworthy in this day and age let me tell you in this prophetic season of authentic wealth transfer god is looking for distribution channels god is looking for houses men he can trust that you say lord you know i i told god something i said lord i know that many people have given in the kingdom but i want you to trust me and see what i will do for your kingdom and i mean it i'm disabusing many of our mindsets right now about prosperity because there are many of us that until now all we are thinking about is just ourselves let me make quick money hammer sharp sharp marry one lady quickly have children build a house enjoy my life and go back to the village by december and say all you suffering ones how far god has been faithful if that is your mindset forget about kingdom wealth forget about kingdom wealth that you know that lord i'm a distribution center trust me trust me with insight trust me with resources trust me with capacity he gave out of trust he gave one five talent that means he saw that the one with five talent was the one who could manage it well then the one with two and the one with one and after a while his point was proven to be correct because the one with one talent didn't do anything with it the one with ten multiplied it and it collected you see I said something years ago and I was accused of it. I said in this wealth transfer, there are believers who their wealth will also be transferred. Those who do not understand and recognize that the purpose of wealth is to build the house of God. In this country, there are believers with houses, estates, and there is nothing they are doing for the kingdom. They are not doing anything for the kingdom only to get angry and talk fly around a church is saying we have a convention and maybe the total cost for the convention is maybe three or four million and that man is paying business class 2.5 right first class 2.5 and in one week he would travel four or five countries spend more than 10 or 15 million and come back and sit in the church and just keep watching when you do not take up kingdom responsibility you will never be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom are you are you getting something right now greed self-centeredness is an enemy to financial dominion are you getting blessed many of us do not know that we are the ones who are stopping God from being a great blessing for us and to us because of our greed we are self-centered there is nothing the kingdom I can never go to a place and not find a way of participating financially in the advancement of the kingdom there are many of us here where there is nothing you have done for the kingdom I'm not talking about offering 
offering is, is because we were religiously raised to believe that you come to church with something. Do you have the kingdom at heart? David sat down and thought to himself, he said, how can I be in a royal palace made of gold? There is nothing I want and my God does not have a place. He said, although you, you are in heaven, the earth is your footstool. You do not need a house but me. I must build you a house. The tabernacle of God cannot be outside and a multi-millionaire is inside. There are many men of God living in houses that are worth hundreds of billions and the carpet in their church, the carpet in their church that is 20,000 cannot be changed. Don't tell me you have passion for the kingdom. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A man will buy a car of 14 million pastor and a church is struggling with rent. How much is the rent? 500,000. What is it to just come and slip it in and say, Pastor, I am a kingdom citizen. I may not be a member of this church, but I know why God blesses me. Quietly, without chorusing around, create a special chair for me close to the pastor. Are you an elder? No. Are you a pastor? No. Who are you? I gave 500,000. Let me show you why many people so that when you see a man that god is blessing don't be angry there is a price they have paid and it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you understanding what i'm saying this is a reorientation when the school of prosperity examining how the internal workings of the blessings of the kingdom notice i've not mentioned anything business I've not mentioned anything money self. I've not mentioned entrepreneurship because that's what many people, this is the problem I have with a lot of success and business people. They just buy cut every of these things and they tell people open a shop, look for 50,000 or 100,000 and it will work. You think it works like that? We will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout for your praise so what is your heart for god lord i want you to bless me god is saying really do you understand my conditions listen brothers and sisters let me shock you prosperity does not just respond to prayer alone there are many people who believe that just by praying, uh -uh, your heart is a great issue that must be examined. There are so many people who are so greedy. Every time they talk about money, let me show you something. Read Psalms 122 in NIV. Can we get NIV? Psalm 122 verse 9. I found this scripture years ago and it, it hit my spirit. I said, goodness, my God. Psalms 122. Last verse. Verse 9 in NIV. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? God is challenging us in this place because he wants to bless us. I prophesy to you is your season. In the name of Jesus what kept your family members will not keep you there are some of us this is the prayer that our parents have been praying for years and say lord will a savior not arise will a savior not arise is this how we will die will a savior not arise many of us have prayed and fasted because of the things happening in our families the lord brings salvation for us in the name of jesus christ while they prepare to, to pull that up, I want you to understand that every time God increases you and your heart tends towards wickedness, he can withdraw the, the blessings. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why after 20 years, a man can be blessed, but after 20 years, he can be so reduced and even be begging. Hallelujah. Everybody read Psalms 122 verse 9 want to read for the sake of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity 
Is that in your Bible? That means, Lord, I'm not just seeking all these millions and billions. How many cars can you enter at once? Even if you have 50 cars, you can't pieces your body to drop in different cars. You can only enter one. Is that true? So if it's just for yourself, you just need a cash flow of a few hundreds of thousands and it will do you. No matter how extravagant you are. But for the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Lord, I'm seeking these billions. I'm seeking these thousands so that you can sponsor a TV program for 10 years quietly and say, man of God, stop thinking about money. You concentrate on praying. Look at how many struggling ministers with an authentic message from God. But there is no voice given to them. Hallelujah. Because of prosperity. Because of your house, I will seek your prosperity. What do you need one billion for as a person? Bill Gates is living off 5% of his wealth and he's still a billionaire. He's giving 95% of the wealth to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yet with the 5 billion, he's still a billionaire. Do you know why God searched around the body of Christ and did not find many worthy believers and he chose to use cyrus's until the believers are prepared there is no not there's none on record that i know there is no man of god or minister of the gospel that i know who is a billionaire in dollars not one the closest is kenneth kenneth copeland the only person that i can say has gotten there he's not exactly a man of god is peter j daniels the man with the largest real estate company in Australia. What is the problem? We are here shouting massive kingdom wealth transfer. And there is nobody. God TV. God TV. Hallelujah. God TV. They are looking for about 6 to 10 million dollars to complete a project for the house of God. Look at the people who have been blessed. 6 to 10 million. Brothers and sisters, are there no people on earth? That can give a prostitute 10 million for one night dollars i'm not talking of naira and it does not shake them all these rich men go for extravagant outings and buy one wine one one wine about maybe 10 or 20 or fifty thousand dollars one wine and they will order cartons of it and believers are here begging please begging psalm 22 verse 5 give 22 dollars five cents all these kinds of suffering something is wrong it's not listen we are not mocking them but i believe that our generation will do something that has not been seen you better believe it i believe strongly that this generation will do something we are truly this omega generation that will do something that will keep the world at a standstill and they will see how we are so separated from the blessing are you getting blessed Forbes 100 billionaires the top 100 people in the whole world there are just about maybe 5 or 6 people who are professing believers and that's the Walton family Sam Walton and all the other people most of the other people are atheists heterogeneous religions coming from wherever where is the church in this members of the Illuminati and all of this and all of that there is poverty in the body of Christ. Even what we celebrate that has turned the head of some people. Let me tell you, that's not prosperity. It will be shadows compared to that which is coming. Believe me, it will happen. It's part of the prophecies that must happen before Christ comes. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And the desires of nations will come. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be a shaking. This is what is happening. The global recession is a shaking. So God is positioning us. Don't ever belittle yourself. We live in a world where every time we are talking like this, you say there are other people. Do you know what God can do with you? He told Gideon, you are a mighty man. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Let me show you what God does. Every time there is perpetual misuse, 
perpetual misuse of his blessings. Hosea chapter 4, verse 7. Is someone getting blessed tonight? You will thank God for this truth that you are hearing. Blessed are the ears that are hearing this. Don't trivialize it at all. Hallelujah. Everybody read. Want to read. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. This is why after 30 years, a man that probably... Listen. There are some things that are not caused by demons. Is how God's technology works. Hallelujah. Solomon came to a point where he said everything in the book of Ecclesiastes, everything that my eyes saw, I desired. Everything. That in such, that insatiable lust for just everything. Money is a wild animal. It can tear you into pieces. If you don't control it. That's why the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. Hallelujah. People make all kinds of nasty statements. People say all kinds of things because they believe they have money. They can hire police. They can do all kinds of things. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that this is the reason why God blesses us. Never forget. Every time you get money, just know that this is why God has blessed me. There is a portion of this that is for me. There is a portion of this that is for king, the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you understand this, you are already in, in a very great, you are a, a landslide uh, uh, progression towards financial prosperity. spiritual laws of wealth and abundance now please pay attention we'll start talking about the laws now we've seen why god blesses us we want to see how he blesses us spiritual laws remember in our course curriculum when i read it for you last week sorry for those who didn't come last week we we read out a course curriculum just just follow we're really sorry i forgot to read it spiritual laws of wealth and abundance even so come Yeshua come and even so come take your bride away take us into new realms oh God how my soul longs to see your face my lord even so even so come yeshua come what are the laws there are spiritual laws brothers and sisters that govern the manifestation of wealth in the kingdom every herbalist look at me if you see this brother today, come my brother. If by next week, Koinonia, this guy just comes with a what? Range Rover Sports, maybe. Or whatever it is. Just, just keep that one. Let's, let's hurry up. Praise God. And he brings a car. And he just comes with some kind of regalia and everything. You can just look at him and say, my brother, in one week, where did you go to? You won't ask him what he did. You say, where did you go to? Somehow, we associate wealth with the spirit realm. Once you see a man that mysteriously rose up to wealth, they say, no way. Leave this guy's money. This guy went somewhere. Not he did something. He went somewhere. So we, and that somewhere in our mind is that he went to a herbalist or a shrine. Is that true? So if you believe that consulting a herbalist can make you rich, it tells you that there are spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Bless you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Please. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. This was a condition for prosperity. And it shall come to pass if thou will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do what? Observe and do 
there is something to do there are laws to live by it's not automatic it's not the issue of receive prosperity there is a dimension where prayer comes in but i want you to know that there are laws everybody say there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom say one more time there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom let me tell you if you do not know these laws i don't care whether you have you have phd in finance and economics you will struggle eventually in your life and you will not experience true prosperity there are many people who believe that all it takes is just go to school go and get a job do this and that wonderful we'll still talk about that but let me tell you prosperity in the kingdom first starts by your compliance to spiritual laws just thank you hallelujah praise the lord say spiritual laws oh there are laws there are laws just like there is the law of gravity whether you believe it or not is there if per adventure you climb a building and try to fall that's when you will know that there is a law hallelujah there are spiritual laws the first spiritual law is the law of tithing the law of tithing leviticus 27 verse 30 Leviticus, excuse me, 27 verse 30. Everyone, please, can we read? One to read. It is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. How many of the tithe? All the tithe. It says, all the tithe of the land. Your tithe. What is your tithe? The word tithe comes from the word a tenth it is a tenth ten percent of your income please write ten percent of whatever blessing god br brings to your life now because we operate an economy that has to do with finance money currency because of currency now we no longer carry bags of rice on our head to come and drop and just say this is my tithe and all of that hallelujah the jews were an agrarian people and because of that that was why all of these things were written but for us now it's just your finances because it represents your highest value and sacrifice in terms of your physical impute and the reward you get from it 10 percent hallelujah now listen I'm going to say something that sounds very controversial. There are people who preach that you should give 30%, stretch your faith and give 30% and 40%. Because it is money, nobody will refuse it. But that's not, the Bible says obedience is better than, there are other opportunities to sow into the kingdom. Call tight what it is. Are you getting my point? Now, there are a few times where God gave certain people customized instructions that were, were just a product of their relationship with God. You cannot carry your personal experience and lord it over people. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that they make people bring 50%, 100%, bring everything and say, um, there is first fruit. There are lots of other things. We'll discuss it. Your tithe is 10%. You can give the 10% and give every other thing. There are many avenues. We are going to discuss that. But listen, I'm telling you now. Your tithe is your 10%. There is a reason why God said 10. He would have said 2. Or he would have said 21 to 50%. It's your tithe. Choose anyone. God is very meticulous and he's exact. 10% is your tithe. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. Another word for the law of Titan is the law of open heavens. It's the spiritual law. One of the spiritual law that is responsible for opening your heavens. Not just financially, but even financially. Somebody is changing tonight in the name of Jesus. 
the law of open heavens malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 will a man rob god question answer it answer it for yourself will a man rob god it's an encouragement it was a question but use it now to challenge yourself hallelujah put your name there where a man is one to go will joshua selman rob god some of you as you are saying it god is saying you see this is what has been happening there are many robbers of god in the house of god many robbers of god and please listen some of you hear this and you think it's some gimmicks by pastors to collect your money let me say something everybody is an authority somewhere are you getting what i'm saying a professor is an authority in his field not everywhere don't listen to garbages by intellectuals they are not spiritual people they don't know how heaven's economy works you cannot go and meet a man who is not a spiritual man and you are telling him to help you analyze the principles of the kingdom the bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit it doesn't add up to them there are many people because a man is sound intellectually does not mean he has spiritual understanding there are many politicians, many people who insult pastors, genuine men of God, and say all kinds of things because they think that because they have political knowledge, it means they have spiritual knowledge. And they take politics. Get out! Leave us in the house of God. We stay with God day and night and we understand this is our area of grace. Let us function. Don't let any politician just come in and all kinds of people who are misleading people in the body of Christ being manipulated by demons and stopping people from entering their breakthrough i know that there are abuses here and there but let me tell you the truth any man that is not faithful in titan is scripturally entitled to poverty scripturally the bible says he that breaks the hedge the serpent is permitted on legal grounds to strike Are you listening to me please so beware there are people who all they do spiritually is they analyze they downgrade spiritual things and just look at it from an intellectual plane and when they add one plus one and they don't know how it will become seven they say it's wrong it may not be wrong just say you do not understand hallelujah are you getting blessed and there are many of us especially some of us as young as we are, we have already imbibed this religious mindset to scrutinize and criticize everything we don't understand. We bring it into our religious mold. And once we find out that it doesn't add up, rather than with all humility, seeking to understand. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the wise men saw the star. Is that true? When they saw the star, they knew that this star was spectacular. It was leading them somewhere. They didn't have sufficient knowledge to understand what it meant. But with all humility, they followed the light. And that light brought them to Jesus. There are many people who need to humble themselves. The recession has humbled a lot of arrogant people who laugh and scorn at the church. Let me tell you, individuals may fail. But the church of God as an entity is progressing. It cannot fail. Because Christ is the head of that body. Hallelujah. The law of tithing. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? This is where you have robbed God. In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. This is the consequence. This one is not the cause of the law. This one is the cause of disobedience. Are you getting my point now? Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. So God wants that there be abundance. That there may be resources to carry out activities in my house. And God says, if you have done your own part, prove me and see the things I'll begin to do in your life. Number one, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, if I will not pour you out a 
blessing. Number three. Okay, a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Number three, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number four, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It could be your job. It could be your marriage. It could be whatever it is that you're doing. It says, and he. So that devourer is not a thing. It's a spirit. It's a living being. And he, that devourer, shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. There are lots of people with all kinds of premature happenings in their lives. Things that you know, this one is the signature of the devourer. Thus said the Lord, verse 12. And all nations shall testify they will call you the blessed of the Lord. He said, for you shall be a delightsome, a well-desired land. Seven prophetic blessings for being faithful in just one law. One of the laws. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? You must make up your mind. Open your eyes tonight, brothers and sisters. And see where the devil has been robbing you of your financial prosperity the first thing that happens is that many believers say if i give where will i get another one question how did the first one come your tithing is a proof of trust hallelujah if you cannot bring out 10 percent of your money and say lord i trust you i come because i love you and i come because i know that your word is true if you're not a faithful tither don't get angry at god many of our parents get angry maybe they are collecting two or three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand and they look forty thousand to go and give a pastor are we stupid like that? Don't turn our head. This is a problem. They think they are giving a pastor. They think they are giving the man of God. Are you getting my point now? What you do not know, listen. The Bible says, if you do this to the least of my people, you have done it unto me. When you come and give in the house of God, please listen to me. If you give tithe that is for the house of God and the man of God eats the tithe, it's between him and God. God, God will not hold you accountable for it. You have done your own part. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, but there is faithfulness. The, the, the rewards of faithfulness are endless. There are many of our parents struggling. They've been trying to build one house for 10 years, 20 years. When the house is almost completed, somebody will do something from the village, everything will be destroyed again. The moment, have you seen families like that? The moment money enters, everybody gets sick until the last time finishes, then everybody will be fine by themselves. That's the devourer. Brothers and sisters, that's the devourer. There is a place that your tithe pays or there's a role that it plays in the kingdom. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Could it be that many of us have been robbed of entering these dimensions of blessings? Some of us go and tell our parents these things in love. There are some of us here that are parents. We have children. We've not been practicing the law of tithing. I want you to know that this is one of the irrefutable spiritual laws. Even unbelievers give 10%. They don't call it tight. But almost all the multi-million and multi-billion corporations dedicate at least 10% of their money and they say it's for charity. Are you following me now? If a believer plants during dry season, there is every tendency that you still suffer, although he's a believer. Is that true? If an arm robber comes to plant during rainy season, the rain will come because he aligned with the season and the principles that agriculture brings. This is how lots of unbelievers, they are interplaying kingdom principles and it's working for them. Tonight, God is giving you an opportunity to make a decision. Hallelujah. We're still going to continue, but 
while you are seated in the next two minutes i want you to pray and say lord grace i've not been a faithful titer don't bow your head pray pray open your mouth and pray there are many of us some of you outside wherever you are please this is the this is a serious business your children this this adherence to these laws will determine whether 10 years from now, 5 years from now, you will be part of those crying together with your children or you will break certain cycles in your family. Some of us, as you are hearing this right now, you may be young, but God is counting on you to break some chains. Enough is enough. Pay the price now. Pay the price now. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, grace. Say, kata ba 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 ba. I have robbed you and I am sorry. I take responsibility, oh God. Many of us have, have yielded to fear. You are not supposed to, to bring your tithe because you are afraid. God is a loving God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. How can God rob you? God is no man's debtor. God does not rob men. Please lift your voice and pray. cry for grace grace oh god from today i make up my mind that i will be a faithful titer not out of fear not out of religion but out of revelation i see that this is a key i will teach my children how to tithe i will teach my workers how to tithe i will teach my family members to tithe i will guide them and help them to be faithful in tithing so that the heavens will be open no power in existence will stop the law of tithing if you insist and say lord i'm ready to comply god is more than able before you begin to abuse god and insult him and say he's not helping my family i'm opening your eyes tonight to see the loopholes Business without Titan will end up in failure. Ministry without Titan will end up in failure. A corporation without Titan, a, a non Titan family, uh, they are entitled to financial hardship. Thank you, Jesus. Look up. Praise the Lord. Let me say a few more things on Titan. Listen. If you are a business owner here, I want you to know that tithing does not just apply to a person. Hallelujah. When Abraham went to go and rescue Lot, right? When he came back with all of the blessings, it was not only him. He was representing many people. The Bible says in Genesis 14 that when he came back, he took a tenth of everything and brought it to Melchizedek and the Bible says Melchizedek blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And his destiny opened up. The great Abraham. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira as a ministry in tithing. The finance department, there is a standard rule in this place. Before we do anything with finance, the tithe comes out. When we started the school of ministry and missions, even that, no matter what we are raising money for in Koinonia, the tithe must go to God. Are you understanding this? So don't just think that these are things we are just saying. You must make up your mind. If you cannot commit to God your 10%, then it means you do not trust that He's able to bless and multiply you. You want to be a billionaire. You know what is the tithe of 1 billion? 100 million. You think you can carry 100 million and just go and give like that? We are going to pray when we are done. One of the graces that we must receive is the giving grace. Hallelujah. The giving grace. 
the giving grace there are many people that do not have if you don't have it is not human to carry money like this and take to the house of god and just go and drop no there is a grace that was the grace that was upon the macedonian church that they gave even beyond their limits it's called the giving grace many of us do not have it we are too greedy everything that enters your hand you spend it on every kind of thing sickness disease any other thing but god hallelujah your tithe what is the storehouse very quickly let's clarify the issue of this storehouse once and for all what is the storehouse because the bible says bring the tithe where to the storehouse the house of god so what is the storehouse really in scripture there are three places that qualify to be called the storehouse number one god's first idea of a storehouse from the bible is the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment are you getting me the place where you receive your greatest spiritual nourishment for many people is their local assemblies because you know they are there they are committed they are workers in the church and then they are giving number one the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment anywhere you receive your primary spiritual nourishment primary there means the major spiritual nourishment that is building your life that becomes the storehouse number two it could be a ministry not necessarily your ministry but a ministry that is committed to the works of the kingdom please get this a ministry that is committed genuinely to the works of the kingdom there are people for instance that so in they are tied into maybe benihin ministry kenneth copeland ministry and it's not their local assembly as it were are you getting my point now but it's a ministry that they believe their vision and they are given into soul winning building and equipping believers listen if you pay your tithe to a dead place where the activities of the kingdom are not happening it can affect your harvest it's in the bible it's the same thing as a farmer carrying a seed and going to throw around in a soil that is non-productive the, the seed will not produce not because it is not good but a poor soil killed it number three now and these ones are they are special situations but i'm going to talk to you the vessel or the storehouse can also be an individual a man of god listen please i want you to listen very well so that you don't confuse what i'm saying a, it can be a man of God, a vessel. The Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there are conditions. Are you getting me? Now, there are ministries that the spiritual fathers or spiritual leaders in the Lord. Are you getting me? I'll give you an instance. Like Bishop Oyedeko, for instance. He is the president of a ministry. Aside from the tithe of the ministry, he has his own ministry. Are you getting me now? So, they can they take this time they don't just go maybe to redeem or kenneth copeland that vessel that they are drinking from on behalf of the people are you getting my condition now and they honor them with their tithe and they speak blessings abraham went to who melchizedek melchizedek was not a city he was a man and he brought his tithe to melchizedek and melchizedek pronounced a blessing upon him hallelujah There are lots of ministries for instance around that by the grace of god look up to us in ways for spiritual direction and they've committed themselves they come and they tighten koinonia here i don't even know this is what they are doing are you getting me but i'm saying whether of these three there are special conditions for the third to occur because there are many men of god who just sit down and somebody in church just corner a few people and say i qualify to be the storehouse come and bless i've explained to you that the condition where a person can be a storehouse but the house of god is where you must bless 
Is somebody getting blessed? These are the benefits, the first law. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Let me touch on one more law and then we'll round up this night. Next week, we'll talk about the natural laws and we'll talk about wealth creation, the principle. The second law is the law of seed time and harvest. The law of increase, the law of giving. Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38. everybody read one to read give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that he met without it shall be measured unto you again this is a spiritual law Genesis 8.22, please. When Noah came out of the ark, the Bible tells us that he took seven unclean animals and two clean animals. Is that true? That, those are the, that's how the animals entered the ark. Seven of the unclean, two of the clean. So when he came out, the Bible says he offered two, two of every animal. That means he offered and finished all the clean animals. How they came back is a technology we must still find out in the Bible while the earth remain verse 21 21 please let's start from 21 and the lord smelled a sweet savour this was noah's sacrifice and the lord said in his heart i will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will i again smite anymore every living thing as i have done 22 while the earth that means this is a law that is valid for as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat god joined it with other laws so you can verify if it's still working cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease has cold and heat stop as summer and winter stop as day and night stop then it tells you the law of seed time and harvest is still at work. Are you getting me? The day these three stop, that day know the law of seed time and harvest has stopped. But from the day they gave birth to you till today, the sun still rises, sets according to our perspective here. There is still cold and there is winter. That means the law of seed time and harvest is still at work. Very, very important. What is the law of seed time and harvest really? What is it? Simply put, the law of giving is a law that this earth, please listen, very, very important. This earth functions by giving and receiving. That whatever it is that you give, there is a technology that is able to multiply whatever you give and return it to you. Now, I'm not talking about money. When you give love, you are practicing the law of seed time and harvest. According to the law of God, love will be multiplied and it will come back to you. Are you getting me? When you sow seeds of kindness, kindness will be multiplied and it will come to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means whatever kind of harvest you want to see in your life, you sow the seeds for that harvest oh this is so important this is not seed faith i'm going to teach you on seed faith we'll come to seed faith i'm teaching you the general law of seed time and harvest often called the law of sowing and reaping be not deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you reap to the flesh. Those who live by the sword, they have sown that seed. They will die by the sword. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is a very powerful law. That means everything that leaves my hand does not leave my destiny. Everything that leaves my hand 
goes an, as an investment into my future and the bible says it will find a way of multiplying and coming back to me that means for all the givings you have done truly if you have not received the harvest god cannot lie expect it it is coming are you following me now very very important now there are many kinds of givings and offerings that come under this law let's run number one is offering in the house of god what you call offering the seeds that you sow when you go to the house of god what you call offering that's one way to practice the law of seed time and harvest deuteronomy 16 16 please let's rush so we have to pray our time is gone offerings that you bring to the house of god deuteronomy 16 16 three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose hallelujah he says in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacle and they shall not appear before the lord empty hallelujah there is an admonition in scripture that every time you are coming to appear before the lord in the house of god as much as god has blessed you you should not come to the house of god empty-handed there is a blessing that follows your offerings and your givings in the house of god please never give just because it's offering time and now you don't want to feel bad there are lots of people that come to the body of christ they come to the house of god without a predetermination they just come and they say offering time and i know it's not easy to just plan but you can train yourself hallelujah and part of your preparation for coming to church is that this is an offering that i'm bringing for god so that when it's offering time you're not just looking 100 naira, you return it 50 you return it 20 naira, even the 20 you return the new one and carry one and say oh shall please you just dump the thing there and say lord at least you so no 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 let your heart be in what you are doing when i finish teaching you these principles you will respect any man that is blessed from the kingdom and you will see why god can punish certain people when they open their mouth castigating blessed people in the kingdom are you seeing now you see that it's not child's play there is what you must do it's not cheap it's not free offerings in the house of god number two i call them kingdom investments your givings for the building of the lord's house kingdom investments every other seed and commitment that you make so that there will be a smooth running of the activities that happen around the house of god i call them kingdom investments lay up for yourself treasures in heaven kingdom investments not necessarily that maybe like project ten thousand like this that could be but you can sit on your own and say lord i'm committing myself god is blessing me there is fifty thousand coming in for me maybe five thousand or one thousand i'm going to commit myself that this is for kingdom investments this is for building of the lord's house this is between you and god you see brothers and sisters let me tell you please and please don't you think this is some spiritual gimmick to bring out money from people satan doesn't want the church of the lord jesus christ to be blessed there are natural laws we are going to talk about but your natural laws have failed already if you don't comply to the spiritual laws every unbeliever pastor they have commitments to various spiritual houses or places of worship is that true whether they are business people or whatever once there is a project and they hear sometimes even without anybody coming they run because they understand the implication i want you to see how unbelievers play these laws and the way they are building a very great financial future with it commit yourself never be in a place and you don't find something let me tell you see eh? years ago 
I used to play the keyboard for a ministry. A man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi. They were part of the team of people that had the opportunity to preach to Obasanjo and all of that. Now they came and they started a ministry in Joss. Pastor, I used to go and play keyboard for them. Listen, nobody ever gave me one naira. Are you getting me? I would trek from my house. Maybe sometimes after I come back from my local assembly, I will go there and I will play keyboard for them. And I will play with all my heart. I was responsible for my finance and everything. That's the law of seed time and harvest. Are you getting me? Kingdom investment does not just mean money alone. Your participation. Every worker in the house is participating in the building of the kingdom. This is practicing the law of seed time and harvest. It's not just your finance alone. The Bible says you will reap where it, it didn't say you will reap where you sowed. It said you will reap what you sowed. So even if you are not here tomorrow, that thing will still bless you. Hallelujah. The only thing I remember getting in that ministry was one bottle of Fanta, I think, and then one cassette during the launching of the man. That was all I ever got. It's my own keyboard, though. Pastor, I will carry it, maybe bike or sometimes from my pocket and I will go there but I was doing it joyfully God is my witness I never complained once to say this man it was even my parents that were saying this, this, this boy is a small boy what is all this one again but I was doing it joyfully but God was watching this is what happened to David while he was tending his fathership God was seeing him and saying I'm seeing the heart of a king in this shepherd many of us when you see certain people you don't know what stories and experiences made God to vow some vow about their lives there was something Abraham did that made God to vow that in blessing I will bless this guy these are the kinds of people that the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake are you listening to me? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. How much are you committing yourself? How much are you committing your resources? Brothers and sisters, kill greed this night. Kill greed this night. I saw lots of things in my family that I did not want. And I made up my mind that I was going to change a lot of things in my life. I have seen this thing work in my life. I have seen this thing work in my family to the glory of God. And I have seen this thing work by the grace of God in this ministry. As a ministry, let me tell you, we have done some dangerous things. I will not begin to say it here. Maybe as we proceed, we may say a few of them. When you see God blessing us and there is an open heaven, find out, find out, there must be something working. And this is what we are teaching. Hallelujah. Kingdom investments, the building of the Lord's house from today. Make up your mind. Once money comes, don't just start jumping around and say, oh, I'm happy. Time to chop, time to enjoy. Uh -uh. Think kingdom. There is a reason why God has blessed me. I am a steward. Part of this money is for me. Part of it is for the kingdom. I skip one thing. Let me help you become efficient in paying your tithe. Get envelopes. Get envelopes. Get envelopes and just put them close to you. So that when money comes, before any devil will come and confuse you, you have put your tithe quickly. Put it and remove it, seal it, and take it away from your presence. Many of us have had tight of three months piling close to us. One day the thing gets tough, you just open one. You know, many of us do a lot of funny things. And the fact that God kept quiet about it is because He knows we are humans and He's allowing us to grow. A day will come, you will receive the gravity of that disobedience. Don't touch your tight, it's holy unto God. This is not to threaten you. This is just the truth. It's how the law of the kingdom works. Hallelujah. Two more and then we'll pray. First fruits. Many people have asked me so much question about first fruits. I'll just touch it briefly. This is one of the ways that we can express our givings. Now, um, look up. What is first fruits? In scripture, the concept of first fruit 
it was ordained by God, it was practiced by the Jews, it was not just part of the Jewish law. The concept of first fruit, listen, this is the spirit behind the activity. If you don't understand it, even those who practice it do it religiously. Or they do it because some churches have register, all the members, if you drop your first fruit, you sign. Later they call you and say, ah, elder, what is wrong? This is much. You have not dropped anything. They didn't pay you. And it so happens that many churches, the employers and the employees are in the same church. So, and the boss is part of the working committee. You can't lie that they didn't pay you. You see, all those kind of things. So let's get it very straight here. Does first fruit exist? Yes. But listen, is first fruit compulsory? No. The same way saying is bathing compulsory? No. But not bathing creates consequences. Correct? Are you getting me now? Your first fruit is a symbol. It's a prophetic way of honoring God and showing him, I'm sorry, that he's first in your life. Are you listening to me? First in your life. That when you take your first fruit, and now I'll, I'll explain it in details, and give the Lord and say, Lord, I'm honoring you. Maybe the first profit of your business or maybe your first salary as a worker there are different ways that people practice first fruit others maybe january there are churches and people who their salary for january they take it to god and everything and all of that is it's not just about giving god money it's about telling god that you are first in my life are you getting the concept now so if you just bring money and just throw and you are frowning around and say these people serve very wicked people i hate january every january is the time they eat our money no understand the spirit behind what you are doing bless you if you do not practice first fruit it doesn't mean that you are not going to enjoy the blessings of god it's just that there are certain dimensions you may not be able to enter as simple as that are you getting me your tithing, your giving, your kingdom investments, they all have their inputs to your financial life. It's like saying, if you don't do extra moral, will you pass jam? You know, that's the question. It depends on many factors, the kind of school you went to and all kinds of things like that. But it will always be an advantage and it will add to you spiritually. First fruit. Please, never allow anybody to put you under force and pressure and try to threaten you with a curse to say sam i'm waiting for your first fruit if by next week you don't bring it upon this altar i will stand on this altar and provoke a curse. Uh, please don't let anybody confuse you there are many people there are many men of god that are bullies they bully members with all kinds of prophetic prophetic messages and they get it very serious they say i saw a vision a cause was coming upon the church and those who did not give first fruit they were affected and everybody just runs around and say carry and give him please just give him less rest everything that is not done out of revelation will not profit you are you getting what i'm saying i'll just leave it there so first fruit is very important as you grow in your giving and you see the benefits of giving you see that's why our walk in the kingdom is by faith there are many people their faith cannot carry them beyond certain things so don't be angry if both of you are blessed and you see somebody making certain progress there are certain laws he's practicing please are you getting me i don't want to go into so much detail i'm just giving you what we need here the last one that i'll talk about is the concept of what we know as prophets offering people have suffered because of this thing let's clarify it once and for all is there such a thing as prophet's offering are you blessed tonight by what i'm teaching you praise the lord two scriptures second kings eight from verse eight and nine what is prophet's offering now look up in ancient times listen please in ancient times prophets or oracles of god as we know men who communicated the counsel of god be it from the levitical priesthood and all of that because they ministered in the house of god perpetually are you getting what i'm saying now 
they had no opportunity to participate in agriculture and other things other secular activities things have changed now but they did not have that opportunity are you following me now and so there were ordinances from god that it was not good and it was not a blessing to go and meet a prophet of god a true man of god to go and meet him just empty-handed like that that it does not command honor you don't honor god you don't honor him are you getting my point now and the king said unto hazael listen they wanted to they were looking for this was um this was um was it hezekiah now i believe whoever it was the king praise god <laughs> Take a present. Are you seeing it now? Take a present in your hand. Where's my present? Take a present in your hand and go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord of him saying, shall I recover from this disease? The king told the man, don't go and meet a man of God empty handed. He said, take something in your hand as a sign of honor. Are you getting me? When it was time for Jacob to enter his proof, I mean for Isaac, to end um isaac to now bless his sons is that true the bible says he told his son go and make me venison bring something in your hand so that it will provoke a blessing from me are you getting what i'm saying the king said take something in your hand don't go and meet the man of god empty-handed so we see there that that's the concept of prophet offering an offering something that you hold in your hands to honor the grace of the servant of god first samuel 9 verse 3 to 13 i'll say it and we'll briefly touch the imbalances there and then we'll wrap up for for today first samuel chapter 9 verse 3 to 13 this was the encounter and the asses of kish saul's father were lost so something was lost they needed a breakthrough in their life please listen i want to teach you a powerful principle there is still the law of seed faith we are coming there but i want to teach you one very powerful principle and they were lost so they needed a miracle and he said to saul his son take now one of the servants with you arise and go and look for the asses verse 4 and he passed through the mount ephraim and passed so on and so forth and all of that but they did not find it verse 5 and when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and begin to take thought of us. Verse 6. Listen. He says, And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God. Everybody say a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He said, All that he saith cometh to pass. Now, let us go and meet him so they were confused they needed breakthrough in their life are you getting me now this was saul and a servant and he said let's go back our father will be worried he said no in this city there is a man of god there is an honorable man who is able to solve our problem he said let's go and meet him the word of the lord comes to to pass in his life he said peradventure he can show us our way that we should go verse 7 i want you to know that this was a culture that was practiced among the ancient. And that's why a lot of them got lots of blessings. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? Are you seeing now? They knew that it was unlawful to go and meet a man of God just empty-handed to say, We have come to meet you and, and all of that. He said, For the bread is spent in our vessel and there is not a present to bring to the man of God what have we verse verse 8 now and the servant answered Saul again and said behold I have here a ha in at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give the man of God to tell us our way are you following me and so on and so forth and then they met a man and they brought the gift and he told them and he called he was an uh, he called Saul an anointed Saul are you getting what i'm saying so the concept of prophet's offering is simply a spiritual way of approaching a man of god with honor knowing listen knowing that god can use him to bless you and solve your problems now today 
in our day is the concept of prophet offering applicable absolutely it is applicable it's simply the law of honor whether you call it prophet offering or whatever is simply the law of honor let me teach you something brothers and sisters it should not deter you that you don't have maybe money to give and you cannot go and meet a man of god now i'm aware that there are lots of men of god if you come and meet them and you don't have anything they don't hide it there is a basket or there is something nobody will even tell you as you are entering those who are taking you they'll say mr man hold your thirty thousand. there are even those who have put their bill they have suffered enough they said look i won't be foolish again prophecy thirty thousand. this and that and that and it's working for certain people they may not be necessarily fake but i think it's inaccurate are you getting my point money and anointing does not mix together people are supposed to do things out of revelation however on your own part i never go and meet a man of god higher than me without nobody comes to my house and not get something there must be something i must insist that you take something is the law of honor there are some of us who are fond of you know and please i hope you know that i'm not threatening you and say start packing god has blessed me god doesn't owe me anything at all are you getting my point now so don't think it's just some gimmicks to steal out money from people no no my blessing is not tied to you my blessing is tied to my practicing the kingdom principles imagine if god if i was totally dependent on you for my blessing i would have died by now <laughs> ah yeah yeah but god is faithful praise the lord do you believe what I'm sharing with you? I will never go and meet a man of God higher than me. Even if he's just to greet. Even if he comes into a city. There are men that I hear that just came into Zaria for a program. I'm not even related. I'll package something. Maybe a tie or wine or something. I'll say quickly, take it to that man of God. Just tell them I, went to, I, I want to greet them. Or sometimes I can just put recharge card quickly. One five or something. Is the law of honor i've taught you this commanding results is the law of honor if you've been doing it stop it many of us on your way to go and see a man of god you branch a a, a restaurant chicken republic you blow five thousand there you finish eating and you belt you say hey by now let's just go and see him and you get up and come and you even sit down sir things are not changing you say god will bless us and you know i'm not talking of me it's, it's very bad it's dishonoring very dishonoring so while on one side we don't just teach people that if you don't have a gift it means the anointing will not flow he will not bless you that's erroneous but let me encourage you i want to encourage you have it as a spiritual culture beyond koinonia you will provoke lots of things there are places i go to minister and i tell you the way they treat me and the kind of honor they give me i find out that there are unusual open heavens even certain things that i don't want to share i find myself sharing it a seed can provoke something in your direction when you honor people he said honor your father and your mother it's a law honor people hallelujah praise the lord many of you have never blessed a man of god see i say this it's just because i have to teach you you don't know how difficult it is for me to teach all these kind of things many of you have never we are here blessing you day and night i've said it and said it some of you don't even know our birthdays you don't even know my birthday to say kai this person is doing all of this some of you try to call and i caught the call and for one hour you're just talking and rambling and making all kinds of noise and you are not wondering you know this very unemotional attitude there are many families like that they gather their whole family we are coming for deliverance we are coming for this and the man just comes where do i sit down and they sit down the wife too sits down demons are disturbing us in this house we had that uh, is it the deliverance ministry or what is it and you know they are talking is very wrong very wrong no man honor the man of god in scripture and did not have anything you are not buying the miracle but i'm telling you it's a law that will open you to dangerous dimensions of blessings when jacob brought the venison for isaac when he took off the venison it provoked a blessing from within him hallelujah i've shared with you my story on how i packaged a very dangerous seed and i left to canaan land 
Hallelujah. I went to go and honor God's servant here. I didn't get to meet with him, but I still went to practice that law of honor. And without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I came out from there, praise God, when I came out from there, I was to enter the car and the Holy Ghost told me, come out. And I came out, he said, kneel down. I laid my hands there. He said, from today, every city you go, the heavens will be open to you. The same way you are seeing it here. So when you see a reproduction of certain things, understand that there are laws that work. There are people who keep criticizing because we are flying our shed. They just look, how are these people doing it? These guys, they must be fetish. That's why you see certain people bring judgment on themselves. You were not there when we were praying the price. But you now see the reward and begin to criticize. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are spiritual laws. There are spiritual laws. One of the reasons why this ministry will never go down is because we sow into your life. There are bosses here. You know, sometimes people ask me, they say, why do you spend so much money on bosses? You don't want to know how much we spend per week just on bosses, chairs outside and the rest. Sometimes I come and I rebuke the protocol people and I tell them, why are there some people standing? Go and get more chairs. Hallelujah. And they order dozens of chairs again and they still need more. I say, still go and get it. It's the law of honor. That I'm a man, I don't know what grace you carry. It's everybody sitting here, you are a bank of grace. It's a privilege that I'm standing here ministering to you. I will be foolish to believe that you don't carry something. Many of you are product of different anointings. Some people have spoken certain blessings into your life. As a ministry, we are humble enough to tap into it. And we tap into it by sowing into your life. Are you listening to me? When we wanted to contact the spirit of excellence as a ministry, we looked at Koza, the Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, and we looked at them and we found out that these guys had a level of excellence we wanted. We carried all the leaders, all the heads of departments, and the ministers and myself. We went to Abuja. Some of you were there. We lodged in a very expensive hotel. It cost us so much, but it was the law of honor. Let me tell you, when we got to Koza there, we went and we humbled ourselves. Our head of department, media, went to meet their head of department and walked there. Our head of protocol went to meet their head of protocol and walked there. Are you getting me? Oh no. And of course, we cannot go empty-handed. We went there when we finished everything. The pastors came and the senior pastor came. They just humbled themselves. I can brag and say, look, I'm a man of God. I'm, I, I'm seen on common demonstrations of the spirit. There is always something you do not have. You must learn how to receive it. And we went and we humbled ourselves there. And they spoke to us. We have seen certain levels of excellence. But when we came back, we came with a spirit and an anointing. Many of you have missed out on many anointings because you dishonor men of God. You are not... See, the way many pastors suffer in many ministries. God blesses you. Ministers are here suffering, speaking over your life. Let me tell you, if you know how much research and the things we do to bring these materials, while you are sleeping, we are awake. The Bible says, he that ministers to you in spiritual things. You should minister to the person in carnal things. The carnal there doesn't mean fleshly. Make it a, a point, a duty in your life. That everywhere you find yourself and there is a man of God there. Practice the law of honor. As much as possible. Please don't feel bad from today to say, okay, you are coming to greet me. I don't have anything. Don't feel guilty at all. Are you getting me? But I'm teaching you. There are many people who don't have the means sincerely, but I'm teaching you is a law. Begin to practice it. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one time I went for a ministration in, in a particular city. I won't call it because there are so many people downloading the teachings. And I was so humiliated. Pastor, I felt so bad. I said, Lord, this is not fair. When I went to that city where they kept me, I was going to ask the people and say, please, where is... A very good hotel here let me relocate and book for myself and stay i didn't come for slavery here to come and stay here for god's sake it was a horrible place when it was night one sister just entered quickly as if i'm going to sleep with her bam 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 she just pushed the drawer drop everything and ran away i said what is all this when she brought listen 
I'm trying to communicate a point. She brought this whole thing and I just sat down. I greeted her. She didn't even answer. Dropped everything and then she sped out. I opened it. They made indomie and one egg with la casera. I had spent that day. It was a very far city. I said, Lord, is it that I could not take care of myself? You have been faithful to me. What is all of this? I don't take indomie. I don't take la casera. Listen. I need to say this. If this is all I say, we'll, we'll round up now and pray. There are many of you who want to invite a man of God. Don't bring a man that your, your financial, if you cannot honor his grace, be patient. There are so many people that want to bring men of God. I want to bring this. We must bring this person. You are not ready to cater and take. You bring any man and humiliate him, you will bring war on yourself. I'm teaching you a powerful spiritual principle. I had to go and buy malt that night. I just bought malt, I took it, I gave thanks and honestly I was not offended. Praise God. The next day nothing, there was no breakfast, they didn't ask whether I'm fasting or I want to eat. Later they just came, they said we have come. The car, they carried me, they chartered one car, at least do something presentable. Are you getting my point? It was hot, it was horrible, I was humiliated. I said, goodness, what is this, oh God? I said, well Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm. I went and it was a great meeting. God blessed all the people. I paid my flight ticket from here to the place and I did everything. When I finished by afternoon, they brought all cross soup for me and something, you know, they just came and dropped it. You know this, this, um, this cooler, this one, that, this small one, that's what they just came and dropped. And we have three or four pure water or something. I said, what is this? I'm not exaggerating. It was a humiliating experience and I spent three days there. On the third day when I was done, I was happy, I laughed. Do you know what happened? I, I want to tell you the pain of many ministers and what has made some people to do certain things. Don't just sit down and criticize and say they are materialistic. Praise the Lord. After this, we'll rise up and pray. This is what happened. And when I got, when I finished everything, the people came, they were all pinching themselves. I told them, please, I need to catch my flight. I, I had misery. I wanted to come back fast. Hallelujah. And then when it was time, the president just came. The envelope that they put the honorarium, you will know that it was not organized. One, you know envelope that they've written something, then you just strike it. I'm serious. And he carried it and package it was not up to even half of my flight ticket he just brought it and said sorry you know that we are we are starting we are managing and all of that and i just blessed him blessed everything and sold it back into them not because i was angry imagine if i had left everything and i came by faith are you getting me now that i came by faith and say i'm going to bless these people some of you do not know the pain there are many men of god that are bleeding there are many people that are punishing themselves, investing in the house of God. You forget that these people have lives. Are you getting my point now? While you are sleeping, they are praying for It's a different thing if they are not serious. But where you see a man that is committed to your spiritual development, let me tell you, you rob yourself of certain dimensions if you do not bless them. Again, if you don't believe this, there is no problem. But I'm teaching you a very powerful principle. I always seek to give and not to take. This is why you see certain people entering some strange order of blessings. It works. Never invite a man of God you are not ready to honor his grace. If you don't have the means, be patient. Don't come and humiliate a man. A man has a wife. He has children. He must pay the school fees of those people. He's commit. This is why a lot of men of God get into all kinds of manipulation because of the pain they are going through. The, he now comes back home and the wife is saying, Honey, well done. No, three days. I missed you. How far? No, nothing for the soup. And the man says, Man, God was glorified. The wife said, Okay, so when will we be glorified now? We have glorified God. Hallelujah. Prophet's offering is real. It exists. Next week, we'll take it up from there. Rise up on your feet. Begin to pray and say, Lord, thank you for your word. Our time is fast, Ben. Just bless the Lord. Tell him, Lord, we bless you. 
Lord, we bless you. Lift your hands and give him praise. Thank you for your word, the law of tithing, your giving, your offerings, your kingdom investments. The honor that you bring to the vessels that God blesses you pray and say lord the giving grace lift your voice and pray the giving grace let it man to me right now the giving grace that grace to give that grace to give the grace to tithe the grace to sow the grace to commit myself in your house go ahead and pray when you pray that prayer no power in existence will stop you i'm telling you you're on your way to financial dominion pray yes lord thank you many of you is a mind shift that has happened to you tonight i know our time is far spent but it's worth it because what you have received now no man can take away from you hallelujah hallelujah now very quickly if you are here and you've not given your heart to the lord we've spoken about the law of honor the greatest honor you can give god is to give him back the life that he gave you there are many of us that are here we are living our lives by ourselves and for ourselves the bible says if your hope is just in this earth alone you're of all men most miserable there are people who have never made a decision for jesus christ inside and outside there are others who have made a decision but honestly you found yourself derailing the teaching on dominion financial dominion will only profit you if you are connected to jesus christ so right now i'm going to give you an opportunity you've never given your heart to the lord or you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing i don't care whether you're a christian or you're a pastor you are saying lord tonight i want to make it right with you please leave your seat and come here right now god bless you God bless you. God bless you. Leave your seat and come. Leave your seat and come. Leave your seat and come. Don't wait for anybody. I believe that there are people the Holy Ghost is talking to. Please, we're out of time. Keep coming inside and outside. Don't be afraid. If the Holy Ghost convicts you, please come very quickly. Very quickly. If there are people that the Lord is speaking to, you've never given your heart to the Lord or you found yourself derailing. There is nothing to be ashamed of. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Celebrate them. They are coming. I believe there are still a few people outside. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Keep coming. As many as are coming, just let them come. Please pray with me very quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you from the depths of my heart. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive cleansing and remission of my sins. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that I'm saved in Jesus' name. Father, preserve these ones. Preserve them and make them mighty men. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please quickly just follow the ushers. They will have your details and they will meet with you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.